consideration, and we're going to find out today because he's going against the baddest Texan, Texan of them all, Harvey Martin. Yes, Harvey Martin has 20 sacks this year, only two less than the club record held by George Andre of 22. So Harvey Martin and Stan Walters will be a great feature today. The Cowboys on their way, 11 out of 12 times going into the playoffs. A victory today ensures the home field advantage, and once again, it'll be in the capable right arm of Roger Staubach. Well, frankly, Roger has not looked good the last three weeks. He's had various injuries, a sprained thumb and a bad hip, but he is all together well today. There's no excuses there. Well, those are just some of the principles in today's little drama from Texas. Right now, let's go down to the field. And I say that Roger Stallback is quite well, but that's about all I can say because the Cowboys are a banged up, beaten, battered team. And they're coming in here today with several key injuries. Fitzgerald may or may not start at center, in which case they'd put Burton Law as the guard and move Rafferty over to the center spot. Randy Hughes will not play at all. Well, down on the field, the Eagles have already lost the toys, so they will be kicking off, and Butch Johnson, along with Larry Brinson, are deep inside the five-yard line for Dallas. The Cowboys coming in with a record of 9-2, and two, and they hold an overwhelming record. They're 22-12 and 12 in games with the Eagles, and the Eagles have not won down here since 1967. So the Philadelphia Eagles with a record of 3-8 and eight against the Dallas Cowboys, 9-2, and two, and we're waiting now for the moment before the ball is kicked and we get this underway. The newest member of the club, Nick Mickemeyer, is ready and kicks it off, and here we go. The ball will be fielded on the five-yard line by Butch Johnson. He's out to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and to the 42-yard line before he is belted down at the last minute by Wilbert Montgomery. What a player. Butch Johnson, he's been good for the Cowboys all year, returning punts and kickoffs. Also a very capable receiver. Butch ranks high in the kickoff return leaders around the National Football League. Watch him. He's a physical receiver. Johnson, who averages 22 yards per kickoff return, almost double that figure as he runs the ball out to the 42-yard line of Dallas. Dorsett in the backfield with Robert Newhouse. The backs are split. First and 10 on the Cowboy 42. In motion is Drew Pearson. Dorsett runs right into Charlie Johnson. And number 65, Charlie Johnson of the Philadelphia Eagles, will be carrying a big load today. Well, when you're going to use that three-man front, you've got to have a great man on the center's nose, and they think Charlie Johnson's going to be just that. He's been awfully quick, and the Cowboys respect him, I'll tell you that. There was a question as to whether Fitzgerald would be snapping John Fitzgerald, and he is. He's got a bad knee, but he is starting for the Cowboys. Staubach, Pearson, and Dupre, along with Golden Richards, there are the boys up front, Neely Scott, and it is not Rafferty now, it is John Fitzgerald. There goes Robert Newhouse, and again, Charlie Johnson wraps him up. Johnson is a rookie out of Colorado, although he spent two years in the Army and had a tour in Vietnam. That rookie designation does not mean he is still wet behind the ears. He is anything but. Now Mihalik comes out as they're looking past, and Martin Mitchell comes into the defensive secondary for Philadelphia. The Cowboys got a great return out of Butch Johnson to the 42-yard line. They have moved it to the 47-yard line. So it is third and five. And out of the shotgun, Staubach. Only Preston Pearson loose, and they'll dump it off to Pearson behind a screen at midfield. He's to the 35, to the 30, and grabbed at the 25. Frank LeMaster got him from behind. He's down to the 22, first and 10, Dallas. As you know, they put Preston Pearson in the game in passing situation. He has only carried the ball from scrimmage one time in the last two games, but he's so effective coming out of that backfield. Such an intelligent football player receiving and running the ball, and watch how he falls his blocks here. Never leaving his friends. He stays there. Behind Rafferty makes his cut there. Look how he follows his blockers, Ben. A marvelous play. Typical Dallas execution as they move the ball to the Philadelphia 23-yard line. First and 10 Cowboys. Drew Pearson is wide left. And Tony Dorsett is the deep man out of the eye. And Dorsett with Rafferty pulling for him. He cannot turn the corner, and he is knocked out of bounds at the last moment by number 46, Herman Edwards. So Tom Rafferty pulled and tried to lead the way, but there were too many eagles. However, he has moved the ball inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. What a year. Almost a certain rookie of the year in Tony Dorsett. Dorsett's numbers are overwhelming. 
Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say he's second to Peyton in touchdowns. Walter has 11 and Dorsett with nine. And you know how many more times that Peyton carries the ball than Dorsett? Exactly. So Drew Pearson is wide left. Dorsett and Newhouse behind Starbuck. Play action fake to Newhouse. Down the left side and he overthrew his man, Tony Dorsett, who was wide open. That Drew Mahalik beaten that time. He just overthrew it just a shade. Cowboys coming out throwing it. That play action fake to Robert Newhouse really froze the middle of the Philadelphia ball club and it sprung Dorsett and Staubach a little early and perhaps not quite warmed up enough overthrows his man. Well I'll tell you the Dallas coaching staff have a lot of respect for the Philadelphia team. They really do. And they also they paid one of the nicest tributes to Dick Vermeil that you want to hear. They just said the strongest thing about their team is their coaching. Third and five for the Cowboys. Again, the backs are split. We'll see it's a passing formation, and Pearson goes out. A double pump and hits his tight end to play to the one yard line. Brought down by Randy Logan. It was too much time that time. Roger Stallback had time to look over the field. He didn't go to his primary receiver, he had to go to a secondary receiver, which is Drew Pearson. Had plenty of time to look over the field. Watch, he's trying to hit uh, somebody out of the backfield. Looking to his right. Can't find him open. Then he spots him again. Too much time to give a guy like Roger Stahl back. And he hit him right in the numbers. Randy Hughes brings him down just short of the goal line. So they'll spot the ball just inside the two-yard line where it's first and goal. Dupree and Salty are the tight ends. Dorsett and Newhouse, the backs behind Stahlbach. First and goal from the two. Dorsett. And he goes blasting through for the touchdown. His 10th touchdown rushing of the year. Working right up the middle. Look at the acceleration of Dorsett. He's there. All you have to do is shade your blocker. Just give him a little bit of room like that with the acceleration he's got. Watch. There's really not a gaping hole there at all. Look how quickly he hits it. Behind the block there of Herbert Scott. And right on in. Gracious. The typical blackboard execution by the Dallas Cowboys and their fans love it. And now Efren Herrera, who is 28 out of 30 in points, kicks it up, and it's good. And just like that, the Cowboys have issued the word to Philadelphia. If you're going to upset us, you're going to have to do it the hard way. The Cowboys, early going, 11.51 to go in the first quarter. Cowboys 7, the Philadelphia Eagles nothing. You're looking at the open top of the roof of Texas Stadium. Folks down here feel the weather is an integral part of football, and consequently, the area directly above the playing field is open to the elements, which is one reason why we have trouble with sunlight and shadows, even though it would appear as if the ballpark is totally enclosed. It is anything but. Efren Herrera out of Guadalajara in a little town, La Experiencia, ready to kick it off. And Herrera squirts one, almost like a runaway gyroscope, fielded on the 10-yard line by Larry Mitchell, who's playing with a broken nose and goes across the 30 to the 32. By the way, this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience, and he rebroadcast for the use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. So Larry Marshall brings it out to the 32-yard line, and the Eagles will put it in play, first and 10, after we just saw the Cowboys go 58 yards for a touchdown with Tony Dorsett punching over from inside the two. Ron Jaworski has Smith wide right, Carmichael wide left. His running backs are Sullivan, and Hogan Sullivan is the deep man out of the eye. In motion comes Crepley, the tight end, and it'll be Sullivan gang tackled right at the line of scrimmage by Jones and Martin and Henderson. I would throw Pew in there as well. I would not be a bit surprised if Philadelphia does, gives up on their running attack because there's no reason for them to have much faith in it. They're rushing for less than 100 yards per game, and that's not enough to, to go anywhere in the National Football League. It gets a good Dallas defense. I think they're number three in total defense. They play the run awfully well. The they Eagles have scored 162, and they have allowed 169. To give you an idea how many close games they've been in. Second and ten. Hogan and Sullivan back of Jaworski. Jaworski looking left and going deep and overthrows his man, Charlie Smith, the wide receiver. Aaron Kyle was right there defending. And so this game, the Cowboys asserted themselves with a touchdown. 
They have the Eagles down 7 nothing, and they have stopped them on the first two plays. Here's the Eagle offense with Ron Jaworski at the wheel. Sullivan and Hogan is running backs. The men who figure to handle the ball when Jaworski passes, big Harold Carmichael along with Charlie Smith and the tight end, Keith Kreffel. Kreffel, up front will be Walters Key, Mara Sizemore, and George. So from the 32, it is third and 10. Early in the first quarter, 7 to nothing Dallas. A slot right with Smith inside Carmichael. And Jaworski going out to the right side off the hands of Harold Carmichael. That would have been a first down had Carmichael been able to hold on to it. And you know it's high when you overthrow that dude. <laughs> he has caught a pass, at least one, in 77 consecutive games. And he comes in here having caught six touchdown passes, but that one a little too much out of his reach. For what it's worth, the record for the Eagles is 80, and that's held by Tommy McDonald in 80 straight games. There's the punter, Spike Jones. He's had two blocks this year, and he's averaged a little more than 37 yards a punt. The Spike will be kicking from his own 20. Benny Barnes is picked up, and he just does get the punt away. Fair catch by Butch Johnson, and he makes the catch inside his 25-yard line. Good coverage there. Vince Papali was right down his throat. Had he not called for a fair catch, Papali would have really lowered the boom. We've got 10.49 to go in the first quarter. 7 0, the Dallas Cowboys. Boy fans are happy. They're leading 7 0. That was a fine punt by Spike Jones that covered 45 yards, no return. Staubach puts it in play first and 10 from his own 24. Drew Pearson is wide right, Golden Richards wide left, and it's Robert Newhaus got away from LeMaster and got out to the 31. So LeMaster had him at the line of scrimmage and couldn't hold him, and Newhouse barrels forward. Bobby Newhouse having one of his better years. He's been around, I guess, about six years. The second year was outstanding. He rushed for about 950-some yards, but this year has been by far the best since then. So Robert Newhouse picks up a strong seven on that carry. That makes it second and three for the Cowboys as they advance the ball to their own 31-yard line. Roger Staubach now becomes the oldest playing quarterback with Tarkington injured and Kilmer not playing. Staubach at 35 is the senior citizen. Dorsett Whoa. picks up the first down easily as he gets out to the 40-yard line. I will say he's the big hole there for Herbert Scott and John Fitzgerald on that left side. Let's watch Bill Berger here. Number 66. Taking on the blocker well, but Newhouse goes right outside, falls, he's blocking well. Dupree staying with his man well. Berge with the persistence that makes him an all-pro player. They gave up an awful lot for him, but he's an awful lot of football player. And there are a lot of awful good football players down on that field. First and 10 from the 40-yard line for Dallas. Pearson is right, Richards is left. Cobb, our play action fake to Dorsett. He's gonna crank it up and then throw short to Newhouse who fumbled but then dropped on top and there'll be no completion. He had no possession. Right on his back was Mihalik. The strength of that Philadelphia defense is in their linebackers. The reason they play a three-man front and four linebackers is because they got four capable athletes. They don't have over three defensive linemen that they consider first rate. They went to it not by, out of choice, but out of necessity. Drew Mihalik right on the spot. The Eagles threw up a pretty good zone defense on that, and Staubach finally tried to dump off to the shortest man, but it was incomplete to Newhouse, second and 10 from the 40. That's Dupre, the tight end in motion to the right. And this time it's Dorsett, and he got a good block from Robert Newhouse on Mihalik, and that moved the ball shy of the 50-yard line. Oh, and those Dallas Cowboys are attacking that left side. They're running off the blocks of Ralph Neely, Herb Scott. Now, whether they're running at any particular person or not, well, we'll see as the game develops. But they're having some success, and there's a guy you don't want to give too much daylight to, Tony Dorsey. So Roger Staubach, who is two for four, and set it all up for that two-yard bust by Tony Dorsett for a touchdown, is now trying to control another drive. It is third, and about two to go for the Cowboys. The ball on the Cowboy 48. It'll be Robert Newhouse. And he's got his first down. And Dorsett threw a block for him, but Newhouse with those powerful legs just churned away. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys are controlling that line of scrimmage. Watch how they move out there on that right side. Pat Donovan throwing the key block here. See number 64, Tom Rafferty pulling. 
But look, they've already knocked him off the ball for a couple of yards. So the Cowboys on the move. They already went 58 yards for a touchdown. Now they're moving again from their own 24-yard line. They're in Philadelphia territory at the 48. First and 10. And it's Robert Newhouse. And again, finding a big hole. And he just had Charlie Johnson on his back. And he rode big Charlie to the 41-yard line. Might bring out that around the league, John Fitzgerald has been recognized as one of the top centers with a man on his head. But a lot of people with his injured leg didn't think he would do as well as he's obviously done against Charlie Johnson this early in the game. Well, a big dog fight. The Denver Broncos coming in at Houston, as you can see, 7-7 in the second quarter. Which is a big date for Dallas and Denver later on this year. Second and three from the 41-yard line. Richards is left and Drew Pearson right. Pitch back to Dorsett. Good blocking. And there he goes across the 30. Mahalik finally brings him down. Tell, tell me he isn't exciting. He's had one touchdown burst of about 79 yards or 77 yards. Then we did that ball game. I don't remember whether it was against the Giants or who. It's St. Louis. Charlie Watch. Johnson is going to get hurt on this play. There he is. Watch number 65, Charlie Johnson. Let's see what it comes from. Good pursuit, though, and good speed by a guy that's playing on the center's head, but can't catch me. There it is. Nearly that's coming in low. Ooh. A lot of good tackles, but they're too far down the field. Tony Dorsett was shaken up on the play. Charlie Johnson is still flat on his back after taking that severe lick from Ralph Neely. So for the moment, at least, we have a couple of players healing here in Dallas. We have seven minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the first quarter. The Cowboys seven and the Eagles nothing. Reggie Jackson, and I'll be appearing with Ned Beatty and Olivia Cole on the return of the hit summer show, Snoznik. I mean, Shiznik. I it's Snoznik, premiering Wednesday, I mean, December 7th, I mean, after Good Times. Well, there are the two players who are involved. Tony Dorsett on his feet and evidently okay to the right of your picture. And we'll see the play that wiped out Charlie Johnson. And Charlie is the strongest man on the Eagles squad. He bench presses something like 400 pounds. Now, he gets a hand on Dorsett, but here's Ralph Neely in the right-hand corner just wiped him out. And he looks like he's going to be out for the rest of the game. Yeah, I hate to see it. I hate to see it. First and ten from the Philadelphia 28-yard line. And Staubach has a move and again. Robert Newhouse behind Herbert Scott's block. And he spins out of bounds. Scott throwing a block on John Bunting, the linebacker on the left side. Frank Lamaster over there doing a good job. Newhouse probably should have turned it up field that time rather than go outside. I think he got a little more mileage out of it. Good pursuit, though, by Frank Lamaster. The report from the Dallas bench that Dorsett had the wind knocked out of him. He's okay, and as you see, he's back in the lineup right now. That is an artificial playing surface down there, and they can get hard. Second and seven. The ball on the Eagle almost on the 25-yard line with 6.54 to go in the first period, and the Cowboys have already asserted themselves they lead 7 to nothing. Robert Newhouse, shy of the 20-yard line, and he was just following Ralph Neely to get there. The Cowboys in very strong command. Last week, you remember, Washington gave them fits in the first half, and in the first meeting between these two teams, the Eagles actually led the Cowboys 7-6 to six in the fourth quarter, and they're not about to let that happen this time. No, so the only thing that turned that game around is Charlie Waters blocked the punt, turned that whole game around. They advanced the ball to the 21-yard line. The drive started on the Dallas 24. It'll be third and three. Richards wide left. Drew Pearson wide right. And Staubach on a third and three is going to send it up. Rushed by Hairston and sacked by Hairston. A big play by number 78, Carl Hairston, who leads the Eagles in sacks with eight and a half. Now that's nine and a half. He has been a pleasant surprise for him. They got him in about the seventh round draft pick. As you know, the Eagles haven't had any draft picks. They trade those all the way for about the last two or three years. I think next year they have a number one. They have been pleased with this boy. That is the 39th sack by the Eagles this year. The Cowboys have 44. Big play by Carl Hairston, and that throws a monkey wrench into that Dallas machine that appeared to be on the move. So they run out of gas on the 36, thanks to the sack. And now Danny White who has been bothered by a groin pull. Nevertheless, Danny is back. He's been averaging just under 40 yards a punt, and he has kicked 20 out inside the 20. And keep in mind, he is a quarterback and can throw from that formation. 
Larry Marshall and Wally Henry are twin safety men but hold everything a flag on the play. It would seem to be too much time to get the playoff. That shouldn't affect his punt at all. In fact, it might help him get it out because when you're kicking from as close as they are, it's easy to put that ball in. So, so from the 36, he'll kick from the 41. And Danny White will now be standing about his own 42-yard line. And again, going back, and this time they might get a shot at the ball. Larry Marshall, number 22, playing with a broken nose, and Wally Henry. And the kick going to Henry's side of the field, and this one is going to go out of bounds, and let's oh. see mark it. They will mark it on the eight-yard line of Philadelphia. Nailed it. Woo. Nailed it down. Danny White out of Arizona State kicks a dandy. And so the Eagles have a long way to go after that 33-yard punt, and the Cowboys leading 7-0. Not all a game of pom poms and cheerleaders. There's another side of the coin. Charlie Johnson with a bad left knee out of the game. From the eight yard line, the Eagles now and Ron Jaworski with Sullivan and Hogan. This time it's Herb Lusk carrying out across the 10 to the 12 yard line. So Herb Lusk, who is the backup to Tom Sullivan and has been playing with a bruised hip, Lusk carrying his first carry of the day. He had a 70 run, a 70 yard run from scrimmage. That's the longest of any of the Eagles. And after that, it goes way down. I think the next longest run is something like 17 yards. So that speaks for the running game. They really don't have that strong a running game. There's Roger Staubach, the extension of the coaches, Tom Landry's philosophy of things, brother. He's Second on the field. six from the 12. The tight end, Crepley, started a move. Then the other side of the line started a move. And by the time Herb Lust gets the move, why, he stacked up. Tremendous discipline by the Dallas Cowboys with all that movement in the Philadelphia line. That's right. And that's what Tom Landry stands for. Total discipline. Look at that. we got the safety blitz on Cliff Harris, number uh, 43 there. Had a two men blitz in that time, which you'll often see on a safety blitz. They'll blitz that middle linebacker, Bob Brunick, who was also coming. Keith Crepley, the tight end, was just able to stay down in his stance. He started to come up, then the other side of the line started to come up, and meanwhile, Dallas quivered but held ground and then smothered the carriers. So it is still third and six, the ball on the 12. Luskin Hogan, the running back, Smith in motion to the right. Jaworski throwing left to Carmichael. Gets a little bit of a block by Wade Key, and that block might be a clip. Wade Key came over to clear the way and might very well have hit his man from behind. There's a flag down, and we have to assume it was a clip against the Eagles. Personal foul. Clipping, number 72, declined. Fourth down. And it was indeed Wade Key. A key to the situation, huh? Yes, sir. There it is. In the first place, I don't believe Carmichael's got the kind of speed to make that play effective. Now, you can do it on the other side with Charlie Smith because he's got a little more uh, speed. That, I don't think it's particularly a good call. So Spike Jones, who punted for 45 yards his last time, now kicking from the shadow of the goalpost. Coming in is Benny Barnes, and he's got a piece of it. Barnes blocks the punt, and it goes out of bounds inside the 30. That is the third punt that Spike Jones has had blocked this year, and Martin, Benny Barnes was just all alone. Nobody picked him up that time, and the great speed of Barnes. Look at him on the left side. They can't quite get to him, and now he turns it on, just sheer speed, and he's got plenty of it. And look how he goes across that in perfect position to get it. And once again... And the previous game, of the block punt turned that game around for him. So technically, Benny Barnes smothers what turns out to be a 15-yard punt. And the Cowboys, first and 10, on the Eagle 28-yard line. And hold everything, everybody in motion. You talk about student body right. Jay Salty was leading a men's choir going in that direction. Ball start, number 68, offense. So among others... You had Herb Scott, number 68, pulling, and there goes Saldy in motion, and Scott tried to get back and couldn't do it. Ain't no use running if you're on the wrong road, is it, Vince? <laughs> What's that thing about we're lost, but we're making good time? That's yes, sir. All right, first and 15. The ball moved back to the Eagle 33-yard line. The Cowboys leading the Eagles 7 to nothing. 
Four minutes and three seconds to go in the first quarter, and the Cowboys have really thrown a lariat around this one, at least the early moments of the game. In motion goes Saldy. Now plants on the right side. Pitch back to Dorsett. He gets away from Randy Logan. Hairston doesn't get him, but Logan comes back to make the catch. So Logan, second time around, gets Dorsett. One of the strong points of that 3-4 defense is the pursuit, that extra linebacker giving you pursuit, and there's a great example of it right there. The master was out in good shape at time to turn it up. Dorsett sees him, gets away from Logan. Logan, one of the better safeties around. He really does a good job for him. He's always a strong safety. There's a reason you see the Dallas Bears shifts. He doesn't give up on the missed tackle and comes back and makes it. So Randy Logan brings him down at the 36-yard line. We're at second down and 18 to go for Starbuck and the Cowboys. And Roger trying to take a lot. Dumps it to Dorsett. Chased by Mihalik and caught from behind. Drew Mihalik making a fine recovery to get Dorsett. Mihalik showing great speed that time. Dorsett, he's full speed in two strides. And that's most of the great backs really are. There's a great difference between the good backs and the great ones. This guy's got all the tools in the world to be one of the great ones. But look at Mihalik. Good speed. There's Anthony. A little look at it from another angle. And look. Yes, he's got acceleration, but not that kind. Not with a good speed behind him. So Mihalik drops him at the 35-yard line where it's third and 17. Mitchell is in. Mihalik goes out as Roger loads up the shotgun. Dorsett staying in to block. Chasing him is Burnham. And he throws it out of bounds. No good. Lem Burnham put tremendous heat on Starbuck. And Burnham's whole job is to sack the quarterback. And he made Starbuck unloaded out of bounds. Good play by Lem Burnham. He's a pretty old rookie, isn't he? 25 or 26 years. Burnham, number 67, spent two years in the World Football League at Hawaii and four years in the Marines. Before coming here. Worked as a truck driver, I understand. I believe uh, right after high school before he went to college. So he did a good job Look at of Butch Johnson. Mm. Now, wait a second. Is he inbounds or out of bounds on that? Looks like he does a good job of keeping those feet in. It looks like it's close. Ah, that left one might be out there. I think the left one was down and the right one was just off the ground as he alternated touching. And so Danny White will be punting from midfield. Larry Marshall, number 22. Wally Henry, number 89. In twin safety for the Eagles. 2.29 to go in the first quarter. 7 and nothing Dallas. And this one again goes out of bounds deep in Eagle territory to the six-yard line. So Danny White driving the Eagles crazy. He's pulled out their tail feathers and they can't get off the ground, Hawk. Don't forget, on Saturday, December 17th, the CBS Sports Spectacular, the WBC World Welterweight Championship. That'll be Carlos Palomino and Jose Palacios. Palomino, by the way, has knocked out 16 of his 24 wins. That'll be the 1977 National Hot Rod Association World Championships, U.S. Professional Arm Wrestling Championships, and the World's Strongest Men. That's the Sports Spectacular, Saturday, December 17th. First and ten from the six-yard line for the Eagles. So they haven't had field position at all. Last time they started on the eight. Tim Sullivan looking for daylight for as many there. They've got to come up with some kind of big play to get back in the ball game. They're certainly not out of it. It's seven to nothing with the field position. Frankly, the Eagles are just not a good enough team to get behind the Cowboys too far and hope to make a game of it. And I thank you, boys. You've got some friends down here. Well, you've got friends everywhere. Well, i got a lot of friends down in this area. I stay down here a lot. <laughs> so the Eagles took over on their own eight. Now they take over on their own six. It is second and eight from the eight. Seven-nothing Dallas. A minute 50 left in the first quarter. In motion goes Crepley, the tight end. Here comes Hogan, and he bangs to the ten, and then he in turn is drilled. Bob Brunick. Do you believe? Do you believe this New York Giants St. Louis game? But you know the St. Louis Cardinals don't call that one over yet. 17 to 7 New York. But that, even so, it is still a shock no matter That's what the right. Cardinals come up with. It course, surely is that. Mike Sensenbaugh broke his arm. Leo Nelson is out. Their secondary has really been riddled with injury. They have that. Third and four from the 12. A minute and 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing Dallas. Smith and a slot right inside Carmichael. The backs go out. 
And the Carmichael goes to pass, and he's out of bounds at the 18-yard line. So they started on the six. They move it out and pick up the first down, and Jaworski finally gets a little bit of breathing room. Remember, when they started on the eight, he just missed on a pass to Carmichael that went off the big wide receiver's fingertip. First and ten on the Eagle 18. Sullivan and Hogan with Sullivan the deep man. And here comes Sullivan, and he just runs into a gang of people. Charlie Waters came up to hit him, but Bob Brunig was there, Randy White. They're just not going to do it on the ground, and Jaworski no doubt knows it. Going to be interesting to see how this young man right now works as a quarterback for the Eagles. The Rams more or less gave up on him, ever being an outstanding quarterback. They knew he had fair capabilities, but it's going to be interesting to see. The jury's still out on him. He's been sacked 36 times this year, eight times last week against New England. He broke his thumb against Dallas the first time, but he doesn't miss playing. He's tough. Big draw to Hogan, and Jaworski looking down the middle, and he's going to overthrow Keith Crepley, the tight end. Had him wide open, too. Overthrew him badly that time. And that could have been the play they needed to, to threaten to score. They've Dallas, got to get out of their own backyard. Dallas really let down. They took the fake on Hogan. I guess they didn't think Jaworski would throw deep in his own territory. Well, those Dallas Cowboys for years, Tom Landry's theory is on defense, you stop the run first and let the pass worry about itself. They'll read run first before they ever go. It's surprising they have as many sacks as they do, but they lead all football with 44 quarterback sacks despite the fact they play the run first. To give you an idea, the Eagles have rushed for a grand total of 11 yards so far today. And it is third and nine from the 19. Jaworski going high left for Carmichael, and he throws it over the head of Carmichael, who is six feet eight inches tall. So Jaworski throws it away. He had a big play to Crepley. That's going to haunt him. Yes, it will. But uh, he is, uh, as you said, he was sacked eight times last week. He's been troubled by having to throw the ball a little faster than they should have. That was a good example right there. He could have waited another split second, but I think he's got a shell shot. You get like that. Spike Jones had a 45-yard punt a little earlier. He'll be kicking from his five. Lamaster will stay in to pick up anybody, but remember, Benny Barnes blocked Spike's last attempt. Here they come again, but this time Huther's the closest man, and he couldn't get it. Charlie uh, Butch Johnson calling for the fair catch at the 41. Vince Papale once again making him call for the fair catch. Good coverage for that man. It's a 39-yard punt for Spike Jones, which is a couple of yards over his average. Big crowd sitting quietly here. The weather might have something to do with it. It was cold and rainy earlier this week, but it is absolutely balmy here in Dallas. Yeah, isn't it pretty? Beach Green Bay, doesn't it, Ben? Oh, wow. We had a glimpse on the pregame show of Green Bay, and it is just about what you expect when you get into December. First and ten from the 42 for Dallas. Here comes Tony Dorsett. He runs around Mahalik, and there's a clip, and I think Mahalik was the clip he this time. Clip he. He was hit from behind. A good block there by Bobby Newhouse. Getting it started. That initial block out of the backfield is so important, and that's primarily why he's in there. When Dorsett is carrying, you will see number 54 of the Eagles, Drew Mahalik, hit from behind, and the clip was ball. Cowboys continue to try that left side, their offensive left side. For what reason? Well, we'll pick it up in a few minutes. It is interesting, too, because if you talk to coaches, predominantly ball clubs are right-handed. That's right. One of, the, one of the few exceptions I know is the Oakland Raiders. And I guess it's because Sta uh, Stabler's left hand. Pretty good idea. And Art Shell and a couple other guys. Pick up the call now. First and foul. Number there you Offense. see the clip right there. The corner will change the quarter. I don't. I think that's uh, Dupree. Yes, that would be Dupree on the Mahalik. Just as the quarter runs out, they will spot the ball on the 28 when we pick up the second quarter. 
And so the boys will refresh themselves for a moment and go after him again, with Dallas leading the Philadelphia Eagles at the end of one, seven nothing. Dallas, the Cowboys leading the Eagles seven to nothing as we start the second quarter. First and 24 from the Cowboy 28 yard line. In motion comes Dupree. Tony Dorsett with wide open, dragged down by Lamaster at the 40 yard line. And it points up a big difference in the first quarter. Philadelphia rushed for a total of 11 yards. Dallas for 64. 29 by Dorsett, 35 by Newhouse. Watch the block of number 73, Ralph did if we can see it. He did a, a number on Carl Harrison that time. Moving completely off the ball, a big hole as you see. Number 73 there, the replacement for Charlie Johnson is Pete Lassitich. And Lamaster in it again. I think they're working away from Bergie every chance they get. And it's working for them, second and 12 from the 40-yard line. In motion comes Drew Pearson. And play action fake to Newhouse, and then they dump it off to Newhouse. He has Rafferty out in front as he gets across the 45-yard line, but there's a flag on the play, and it might very well have been trying to get Staubach on a throwing the ball. I believe you're right. Mm -hmm. Kansas City... Seven, Cincinnati seven in the second quarter. So there it is. They look like they were roughing up Starbuck a little bit. They're using those screens and the draws and the delay action pretty effectively against Philadelphia. Those linebackers are taking deep drops. A personal foul, roughing the passer, number 73, defense, first down. That's Lasitich. Let's see. He got around away from his man, but then, of course, that's what they wanted him to do, to screen, to draw him in there and get him out of the pursuit. Hasn't been playing regularly. That's understandable that he'd make those mistakes. Newhouse puts a burst on. The master right there. They, the Eagle linebackers, as I said, are dropping deep, but they're coming up, converging very quickly. That was Tom Rafferty who made the block for Newhouse. So it is first and 10 on the Eagle 39-yard line. Saldy on the right side now on a wing. And here comes Newhouse, and he runs into a game. So far, Dorsett in eight carries has gone for 41 yards. Newhouse in seven carries, 35 yards. As we said, the Eagles have rushed for only 11. Here's the bowl picture on CBS. Sunday, Christmas Day, Penn State versus Arizona State. Following the Fiesta Bowl will be the Sun Bowl. Saturday, December 31st, Stanford versus LSU. Yeah, that ought to be a game. The Cotton Bowl, Monday, January 2nd, undefeated Texas and Notre Dame. That'll really be a game. Second and seven on the 36 of the Eagles. In motion comes Drew Pearson. Play action fake to Newhouse who stays in to block. Hairston tried to drag him down and couldn't, but he's eaten up at the last minute by Manny Sistrunk, number 79. Yes, sir, and you all recall how he got over there on a Joe Lavender trade a year ago or two years ago. I, memory doesn't escapes me right now. Good coverage there, as you see. Pressure on, and Roger just does not throw it up for grabs. Not many interceptions does this man throw. Eagles have improved themselves over last year considerably in their pass rush. That's their 40th sack of the season, and last year I think they had something like 19 the year before, something like 17. Well, Sistrunk, who put the pressure on and took advantage after Hairston had Starbuck scrambling, makes it a third and six from the 35-yard line, and so once again, Roger looks down the barrel of the shotgun. 7-0 Dallas early in the second quarter. Going it out to Dorsett. Bunting had to bring him down at the 25-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down. And that is something they, the Cowboys have used sparingly as Dorsett is a receiver. As you know, they put Preston Pearson in in situations like that. But if you're going to be a running back and as many zone defenses are thrown up, you've got to be able to catch the ball, too. Coming into this game, Dorsett had caught 20 passes, so he's accustomed to be on the other end of it. He also has Dallas's longest run from scrimmage. He busted one 77 yards against St. Louis. So Tony Dorsett is everything you thought he might be in professional ball. First and 10 from the 26, 12 minutes left in the second period. Seven to nothing Dallas. Newhouse across the 25. Holding his whole defense together is, as usual, Bill Berge, number 66. Just what can you say about a guy like that that hadn't been said? Not only is he a great football player, he's a great person and a great competitor. He just does not quit. I don't care how far they're out of a game. 
And speaking of out of the game, the Philadelphia Eagles have not been out of but one game this year, and that was against the Rams, their second game of the season when they got beat 20 to nothing, I believe. Which is a very frustrating decision for the Eagles. Will they tinker with a club that is going to get better, or do they have a ball club that really just a buck short? There goes Newhouse. And again, the Eagles meet him head on before he can get to the 20-yard line. Newhouse has carried nine times for 39 yards prior to that trip. For the Eagles, they have been bottled up on a couple of marvelous punts by Danny White. They have also been bottled up by their inability to get the ball away from Dallas, who continue to just hold on to it, even though they have only one touchdown. Cowboys went 58 yards the first time they got the opening kickoff after a 37-yard return by Butch Johnson gave them very good field position. Third and five from the 21 of Philadelphia. Shotgun again. And an inside flip to Pearson. A flag on the play, and he's thrown into the end zone. Oh, the Dallas Cowboys. They will throw a wrinkle in now and then. It'll be motion against Dallas, and that will nullify the touchdown. And don't that smart. What's that line? Don't that make your blue eyes brown, or is it brown eyes blue? Either way, <laughs> you got it across. Oh, that one does hurt. Illegal motion, number 67, offense. Number 67 would be Pat Donovan, having a fine year for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's see if we can pick it up. He'd be the right tackle. I don't believe we got the movement there. But this uh, is Dallas precision, brother, and execution, as you mentioned earlier. When they do get a play, it's all like it's off the blackboard. All the way in, untouched until the one. So they'll spot it back on the 26, where it is third and 10 for Staubach. Dorsett and Pearson split behind Roger. Staubach going the distance. And oh. intercepted in the end zone by Randy Logan. He's going to run it out to the 15-yard line, spun and dropped at the 17. What an incredible reception, one-handed. Randy the... Logan, his third interception of the year. Oh, no, he fell off that time. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Trying to go to Pearson to the deep post. Roger Staubach didn't even look at anybody else. Now watch the play. With that one hand going up there, he may have stayed in. Sensing an opportunity, moved on out. And once again, the Philadelphia Eagles have dodged another bullet. That's that re interception by Randy Logan, the one-handed one. Time of possession we don't have right now, but in a number of plays, Dallas has run 29 against the Eagles, 12. We can give it to you now. Cowboys have had it over 10 minutes, and the Eagles, 4 minutes. The first and 10 from the 18. Big clutch play for the Eagles, and Jaworski now trying to get out there to Crefley, and Crefley pushed out of bounds after he got across the 35-yard line. He went out at the 37, first and 10 Eagles. He has been a pleasant surprise, Keith Crefley. He, in fact, is he's averaging over 19 yards a carry, and that's high for any tight end in all of football. Charlie Johnson, whom we saw just about destroyed by Ralph Neely on a clean but savage block, and he doesn't look like a man who's going to play anymore. No. Took the shoulder pads off. First and ten on the 37. Jaworski again out to Carmichael, and he is drilled and chased by Aaron Kyle. Got it out to the 42-yard line. Don't forget a great show, the 1977 Heisman Trophy Award Special. Elliot Gould and O.J. Simpson will host an hour of entertainment, and among the many stars appearing, Phyllis George, Reggie Jackson, Connie Stevens, and Leslie Uggen. The presentation of college football's highest honor, Thursday at 10, Eastern 9, Central and Mountain Time. Second and four from the 43. Carmichael wide right. Smith is left. Fumble, but the Eagles recovered, and the second man fell on top of it as Jaworski couldn't find it, but Hogan did. Oh, Mike Hogan bailing out Jaworski, who just dropped it right on the snap. It's not there. So Hogan came up to save the bacon. 
despite the absence of a running game, the Philadelphia Eagles have done surprisingly well in the stats department for offense. They're sixth in offense in the NFC, and with a record of three and eight, you wouldn't think they'd be that high. But they need on the arm of Jaworski. Much reception by Randy Logan in the end zone to stop Dallas, plus the infraction of man in motion that took a touchdown away from the Cowboys. And Jaworski spinning out of the sack to the 45, and he'll go down at about the 47. He's going down for his life, and I think he would pick up the first down. And you talk about your mobile quarterback. Not only did he gain a couple yards on the thing, and I think gave him a first down, but he kept him getting killed by Harvey Martin. Watch him jump rope back there, too. Would you watch? This is a sign of a, a exceptional athlete that makes plays like this. Look at this now. That's Bill Gregory, number 77, Harvey Martin right there. Spins out of that, or he gets knocked out of it, I guess. And turns it on the field. I believe in a mobile quarterback then. And he's mobile, all right. First and 10 to the Eagle 49 yard line. All started on the interception by Randy Logan. Lust and Hogan in the backfield. Jaworski going to put it up. Looking left. A lot of time. Goes deep left. And it's caught by Hogan. And he's going to go all the way. Mike Hogan, a second-year man out of Tennessee in Chattanooga. And a 51-yard touchdown And would pass. you believe who he outran that time to get open? Of course, as you'll see all the time in the world with that Philadelphia offensive line. Virtually no pass rush, but he beats Tom Henderson, who has excellent speed. Tom Henderson's a, a below a 10-flat sprinter himself. Mike Hogan, look at it again. All the time in the world. He tried to go deep to Smith on a post pattern, couldn't, and that's his secondary receiver and a fine reception there by Hogan, who's been just a phenomenal athlete for Philadelphia. He's just been a picture of steadiness. Nick Mickemeyer just joined the club, gets it up, and it's good, and he is a full-fledged member of the Philadelphia Eagles. So first, an interception by Randy Logan, and then the touchdown pass to Hogan. Logan to Hogan, and we're 7-7 in Texas. 23-year-old Mike Hogan on the end of that touchdown pass from Ron Jaworski and the Eagles and Cowboys are tied 7-7 and now Nick Mickemeyer kicks it deep to Larry Brinson on the one-yard line as the Cowboys take over. Brinson to the 20-yard line. Hit from behind and dragged down by Outlaw and he got out to about the 23. You know the Cowboys have been absolutely awesome in the second quarter all year. They have scored 101 points in the second quarter. And when Staubach threw that apparent inside pass to Pearson for a touchdown, it looked like they were going to rout the Eagles. But then came the interception by Randy Logan and the touchdown pass to Mike Hogan. And the Eagles have done it. 82 yards and six plays. 7-7 with 7.29 to go in the half. Richards wide right. Pearson wide left. Dorsett. And the Eagles are there, Bill Berge among others, to put a hold on him. You summed it up there. That's been the big quarter all season for the Dallas Cowboys. They've only given up 59 points, and as you said, they've scored 101 in the second quarter. So the biggest play of the game really turns out to be the motion penalty charged to Pat Donovan, who pulled on what appeared to be the touchdown by Preston Pearson and the Eagles. As they have done all year, gathering themselves together and come back to tie it up. Second and eight from the 26. Butch Johnson is wide right and Pearson wide left. The backs of Dorsett and Newhouse. Staubach looks right but then throws to Dorsett. And he's going to go down at the 40-yard line. So Dorsett picks up the first down to the 40. To see the added dimension you get with a guy named Tony Dorsett in your backfield. Not only running the ball, but in a little delayed actions, which are always open. I don't understand why coaches see. He just stays and hangs in the backfield there, waits for those linebackers to clear. A simple pass to throw, and you rarely see it go for under, oh, 6, 8, 10, 12 yards. I don't see why they don't use it more often. But with a guy like him, he can take it the distance. The Dorsett, who is almost averaging five yards a rush, has caught two, and it's first and ten on the 40, and now Dorsett will run, but Randy Logan hit him at the ankles at the 40-yard line, and then Hairston fell on top. Tom Landry sending in Jay Saldy, the tight end, with another play. Look at that Mike Ditka. Look at him. Looks like Errol Flynn, brother. 
He has kept himself in great shape. You remember Mike Ditka from the Chicago Bears and coming down here with the Dallas Cowboys. Say, home movies are always good for a laugh, especially when they recapture Rhoda's childhood. Hilarious highlight of tonight's family reunion on Rhoda at 8, 7 Central and Mountain Time. Join the fun. We got fun here, second and nine from the 41, 7-7. Seven, seven. 5.30 left to go to the half. Here comes Newhouse, and he is Pelson. Lazatich and Hairston really put it to him. That's it. Pete's playing well in replacement of Charlie Johnson. Pete Lazatich. He has done well. Lazatich, who made that stop, number 73, is a much travel guy. He played in the Canadian Football League with Calgary. Well, Manny so Sistrunk helped out. The Eagles have had their problems. As you know, they've been through various trades they've made, whether right or wrong. They've lost a lot of the draft choice and won't have really a first draft choice until two years. But they just make a makeshift job of all the players they can find wherever they come from. Third and seven from the 43, Staubach out of the shotgun and either just messed up the pass or it was actually deflected. And he was in the act of passing. Or was that an interception? I saw a hand come down there right underneath it. Let's see. I don't know whether somebody just spun the ball around or whether it slipped out of Rogers' hand. It happened so fast. And maybe we can take another look. Well, that's a great up. thing about instant replay, isn't yeah. it? Let's take a look and see. Rogers getting a hold of it, all right. That arm's going forward. It is not a fumble. Oh, see, it just came yeah. out. He was throwing a knuckleball. <laughs> that's it. Or a spitter. You don't see it very often. So fourth and seven from the 43, and Danny White, who has kicked two out, one at the eight and one at the six. This time he's too far away, so he belts it down to Larry Marshall, and the kid with a broken nose gets it tripped up by Benny Barnes at the 15-yard line. Boy, what a player is Benny Barnes, yes, number 31. Sir. He is awfully good on the punting teams. All right, the Eagles seven and the Cowboys seven. 4.50 to go to the half. Eagles first and ten on their own 18. That's where they started on their last touchdown drive. The big play in that drive, a pass to Keith Crefley, and we'll see if Worski is looking for the tight end again. But no, it is Betterson, and he is pulled down shy of the 20-yard line. Jim Betterson, one-year man who has a touchdown this year. He's out of North Carolina. Say a reminder, Jerry Pate and Hollis Stacy leading Curtis Strange and Nancy Lopez by three strokes in the mixed team championship. And that'll be on the finale right after the game, so stay with us. Carmichael goes wide left. Montgomery behind Hogan. And Smith wide right. And it's a gift to Hogan. And I'll tell you who was very surprised on the play, and because he was surprised, it didn't work. Stan Walters, number 75, was just standing there and appeared to be startled on that play. Yes, sir. He passed him up in his way. I think Walters expected a pass. Watch 75 well, on the left your screen side. now. There's Hogan. There's Walters. Walters saying, where'd you come from? He might have thought that was going to develop to the inside that time. Didn't he look like it. He would start off and left all the way. Good effort there by Mike Hogan. you got to like a guy like that. So it's third and five. The Eagles move the ball out to the 23-yard line. Started on the 18. Smith slot right inside Carmichael. And there's Crepley now coming off the line as the tight end wide left. And they ran out of time. Took two on. The 30-second clock runs down, and that'll pin five yards on the Eagles. And instead of a third and six, you're going to have a third and 11. That's no quarterback in the world, I'll tell you. And with that field position, tell you, likes that. Position. Delay, offense. So they started on the 18, and they're right back there again now. A third down call by Ron Jaworski. 7-7. Seven, seven. Dorsett went over from inside the two, and a 51-yard touchdown pass from Jaworski to Hogan tied it up. Third and 10 from the 18. With 3.24 to go to the half. Wilbert Montgomery in there with Mike Hogan. And Jaworski chasing away from Gregory, and he's got his man for the first down. Bill Gregory chasing Jaworski, but Ron had his eyes down the right side and picked up Charlie Smith and hit him. Charlie Smith. 
biggest thing they have, the nearest thing they have to a deep threat on the Eagle team. He doesn't have blinding speed. He catches the ball well, runs pretty good pattern. They're pleased with him. So they picked up 16 yards from the 18 to the 34. That's a first and 10 for the Eagles. We have two minutes and 51 seconds, and Charlie Johnson has had it for the day and perhaps for the year. Pitch back to Wilbert Montgomery, and he goes out of bounds. A flag on the play, and I think a clip is going to be charged against Stan Walters, number 75. Let's see, Thomas Henderson pointing at Walters as if to say, you are the guilty party. Henderson, a very outspoken cowboy himself. So Thomas Henderson wearing a striped shirt for the moment, indicating the man who broke the rules. And Stan Walters a little bit ticked off now. They'll spot it at the 21-yard line. And we'll get the call. Personal foul. Clipping, number 35. Offense. Number 35. But it's at 35, which is Mike Hogan. So we'll take another look. Now, Henderson thought that Walters, 75 clip. So let's take a look at 75. Stan Walters, and let's look at 35. And let's see who did get through the clipping. Well, it was on a marginal clip. It was a clip. I would think probably we'd go on Walters there and go back to the back of his leg. Well, it's first and 23 from the 21-yard line, and Jaworski to Montgomery. He got away from two tacklers. He got out across the 25. Charlie Waters and Harvey Martin appeared to have him, but he got away for a yard or two, but they're still very, very deep. That was a long way to go. The outstanding Randy White was fooled that time. Took him out of his area on a misdirection play. What a year he's having, though. All pro honors, I think, are coming his way. I can't believe that. Whoa. Don't forget at halftime, we'll have all the scores, but that one will stand up by itself for a while. The Giants 20 and the Cardinals 7 in the fourth. Ball on the 27-yard line. It is second and 17 for Jaworski. And he wants to come over and talk to Dick Vermeil. Vermeil, the 41-year-old coach of the Eagles, who has done a marvelous job. Of course, it's quite a job to come up with the play second and 17. The two minutes left in the first half, Eagles in Dallas, 7-7. Go to the half. The Eagles and the Cowboys are stacked up 7-7. And for the Eagles, they have 17 yards to go for a first down. The ball on the Philadelphia 27-yard line, second and 17 for Jaworski, who has a modest string going now. He has completed four in a row, the last one to Charlie Smith. Charlie goes wide right, Carmichael is left, and Sullivan is back in there with Hogan. Second down, 17. Hogan stays in to block, and he dumps it off to Sullivan, and Sullivan is stacked up and knocked out of brown by Mark Washington and Aaron Kyle. And Ben Scully, who would have thought this game at halftime would have been like it, the way Dallas came out on their first series drive, got a hit seven and nothing, threatened the entire first quarter, and then... Uh, now it's tied up seven to seven. The only interesting point about score, Dallas won last week 14 to seven. The Eagles lost to New England 14 to seven. And they're playing somewhat the way they must have played last week. Cowboys have amazed me through the years, though. They seem like they only move the ball when they have to. They don't have killer in a lot of games that uh, started out this year. It looked like the best Cowboy team ever. They were building up large scores on teams. But the last four weeks, not so. Third and 15 from the 29. Jaworski going to go to Hogan at the 30 to the 35, out to the 38-yard line. That is not nearly enough for the first down. He got to pick up 15 yards and get to the 44. So the Eagles will have to give it up. And Spike Jones will come in to do the punting. One minute and 37 seconds left to go to the half. The Eagles and the Cowboys are all tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Again, to repeat, the Eagles this year have scored 162 points. They have allowed only 169. Meanwhile, the Cowboy defense has given up only 157. So it figures to be a hard-nosed game. And the last time they met, the Cowboys won 16 to 10. So it's 7-7 seven, seven with 137 to go. And for the Eagles to shut the Cowboys out in the second quarter, that's quite a trick. It certainly is. It's a tribute to the coaching of the Eagles staff because they're playing with a lot of makeshift players. 
The Eagles have three timeouts. Dallas with two. And Spike Jones ready to kick. Standing all alone is Butch Johnson on his 20-yard line. And hold everything. Knocked flat on his back is Dennis Franks, the center. That turned out to be a big play the other night in the Washington game, didn't it? That's right. When D.D. Lewis, the center, and Washington felt that D.D. had moved, drew the line offside, kept the Dallas drive alive, and they went on to win it. So the Eagles turn about as fair played. Let's get the call. We do know that Dennis Franklin has knocked on his numbers. Knocked on his numbers. Huh? Encroachment, offense. Move it back a little. So that makes it fourth and five. So it gives Spike an extra five yards to work with. Don't forget, Brent, Phyllis, and Herb coming up, along with a report from Largo, Florida, our mixed team championship at halftime. Scores of all the other games. Low pass from center. He still got it away. And Butch Johnson at his 25. Papali nailed him at the 30. Vince Papali has done a fine job twice of causing Johnson to fair catch and this time when Johnson caught it Papali caught Johnson. Earns his money doesn't he? Sure does. He really had a short hop the ball and Dennis Franks really bounced it to him. Ben alluded to a low snap from center and that's just about shoe tops. Mm -hmm. That will throw a kicker off too. It might be why you can directly attribute that to the short kick, a relatively short kick. All right, the Cowboys with two timeouts have it first and ten on their own 31. 128 left to the half. 7-7 seven, seven tie out of the shotgun of Staubach. High off Dorsett's hand. And both Mahalik and LeMaster were coming up to try and knock him back to Pittsburgh. Well, Mahalik has been good on the pass coverage all day. He is getting a good long deep drop, but he is coming up rather quickly. Look at this. You've got to know that Tony... Dorsett knew there's somebody in the area because his concentration was not entirely on the football. And look, here they come. Mahalik and Lamaster saying, next time. And I'll, and I'll be here the next time you come. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 31 with a minute and 23 seconds to go. Roger loading up the shotgun. Starbuck. Going to the right side off the hands of Supre, the tight end. And the crowd growling a little. John Bunting was right there defending. Billy Joe Dupree. We've been down here in the lands of the Joe Dons and the Billy Joes and the Billy Clyde. They will have a double name here in Texas. So Starbuck now has a third and ten and Roger... With a hello CBS from the Super Bowl bound Cowboys. It says there. There's a lot to be decided before the Super Bowl. Particularly with that St. Louis game going like it is. Who's going to who's going to be the wild card from where. All right. Third and ten from the thirty one. One eighteen. Staubach faking over the head of Burnham. Dumps it off to Pearson and he fakes Logan. And he's to midfield, and coming is Johnny Outlaw to trip him up at the 40-yard line. The old middle screen trick. Just the other day I was asked, why didn't Roger Stallback throw the middle screen for the shotgun formation? Well, he does, and there you'll see it. He just gets the ball over Lem Burnham's hand. There Burnham almost got it. You see Preston Pearson stepping back inside, acting like a blocker. The old jump pass by Roger Stallback, and I know of no other quarterback that uses it. Look at the three men out in front. Rafferty. Herbert Scott, and here is the thing. Preston Pearson, very intelligent receiver, but not the speed, and a person with more speed might have taken it on in for the score. Yet, when it comes to the two-minute drill, there's no quarterback any better than Roger Stallback. A minute and six left, as you see. First and ten on the Eagle, 39. A Cowboy club that has destroyed the opposition in the second quarter has been blanked up to here in the second quarter. Staubach down the right side, throws it away, puts Johnson in the area. That's about all. John Outlaw on the cover. The so Starbucks stops the clock with one minute and one second to go at the half. Second and ten, the ball on the Eagle 39-yard line. You know, you mentioned the fact that among active quarterbacks, he is the oldest at 35. You just don't think of it because of the four years he spent in the Navy before joining the Cowboys at 35. They've got to keep a boy like uh, 
White around Danny White to start thinking in terms of replacing it. Although he does take care of his body a whole lot more than, well, say Billy Kilmer. Like Billy Kilmer? <laughs> Second and ten from the Eagle 39. Staubach again down the middle this time and high. Great catch by Golden Richards. And he's down just shy of the 15-yard line. It was Golden Richards who caught the touchdown pass to beat Washington. And a fine catch there. Roger gets it. I think we'll see this right here just after he releases the ball. But all the concentration is on that open man. Just as he released it, he did get dumped. Look at the fine catch by Golden Richards, who is not having one of his finer years. Of course, he's only playing half the time. He's alternating with Whit Johnson. Makes a fine catch before he takes it on down. He's only averaging 12 yards per reception this year, and his previous average is somewhere up around old 18 or 19. Dick Vermeil, 41 and aging rapidly, with 52 seconds left to go in the half. Dick, who has done an outstanding job with the Eagles, Coming off the campus of UCLA, where he had upset Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. He was 15-5 and five in college in two years. Dick has seen his club come agonizingly close so many times this year. And as he was saying yesterday, the one thing he is trying desperately to learn is to absorb a tough defeat without chewing himself to pieces. That's right. He used to blame himself for all the losses. He said, this year it's just been too frustrating. I passed him twice today in the lobby before I realized who it was. He's such a youthful person. On the other side of the field, standing atop Mount Olympus, is the sixth winningest coach in the history of football. Tom Landry at 53 has seen his Cowboys win 146 games. They're going into the playoffs for the 11th time in their last 12 years. If they win today, they'll be... Winners in the NFC East for the second consecutive year. A very matter-of-fact, calm, self-contained man, and his teams play just like it. They're very disciplined, as is he, and his dress, his appearance, the whole thing. And, of course, for Tom, I guess, the peak of his career winning the Super Bowl, Super Bowl VI and 72. Right now, it's first and ten on the 16. We have 52 seconds to go to the half. Preston Pearson and Tony Dorsett, back of Starbucks. Staubach is going for six and throws it away. Down there in the corner was Drew Pearson, but he wasn't within 10 yards of the ball. Well, you can look at things from two ways. Let's look at it from John Outlaw's position, and you'll find that he had the coverage. They had the right coverage on that time. If anything, it would have been an interference on Drew Pearson. Did we catch it? The pattern was not there. Roger tried to force that one. Should have not thrown in that air. The crowd roaring over that giant cardinal ball game with 47 seconds to go to the half. After two big passes, a screen pass to Preston Pearson and a pass to Golden Richards, Staubach is trying to take his ball club into the locker room with a lead instead of tie. Once more, going into the end zone, and this time it's caught by Drew Pearson for a touchdown. How many times do we have to say it? When the Cowboys get in trouble, you can look at them going to Drew Pearson, number 88. Big players make big plays, Ben, and that's why the Cowboys have been so successful in the past. Roger Staubach, a big player himself, right on the money. And a fine catch there by Drew Pearson. Good coverage by John Outlaw, but there's no good coverage against a perfectly thrown pass. Let's look at it again from a different angle. Ground level shot of it. Up and at it. So the Cowboys, who were denied once when it appeared that Preston Pearson had scored, and that was called back, this time they get one for keeps to Drew Pearson. And the Cowboys have once again asserted themselves. They lead the Eagles 14-7 to with 42 seconds to go to halftime. But for the Eagles, anyone who saw them on that 51-yard touchdown pass to Mike Hogan, it's certainly not a ball club that's going to back off and quit, not by any means. Now you talk about infinity, there's a man looking at himself, looking at himself, looking at himself, looking at himself, at infinitum. He had to look at around all the way from home too, just to for that moment. You're in showbiz. Wilbert Montgomery and Larry Marshall 
The twin safeties now going back to receive for Philadelphia. And little Efren Herrera will be kicking off for Dallas. Bruce Huther, number 57, directed to be on the outside of Tom Henderson. Mike Hegman just to the left of Herrera, and we're ready. 42 seconds to go to the half. Dallas leading the Eagles 14 to 7. And Herrera will send it down to Larry Marshall, but no, Montgomery takes it away from him. To the 15 and to the 20. So Wilbert Montgomery, a rookie out of Abilene Christian, and maybe he decided down here in front of the Texas folks he had a run with one, so he just took that away. Either that or the fact that he's a number two uh, kickoff returner in the NFC. He's done well this year. He's averaged over 24 yards per return. Not so well that time, though. Larry Marshall, right back of him with 22, and Larry playing with a broken nose. You had to play with a broken nose, huh? I played with him a lot of times, Ben. <laughs> that big old cage will keep him off of you for a while, though. The Eagles have three timeouts and 37 seconds. We'll see how they deploy it. Hogan and Sullivan back to Jaworski from the 20. Fake play action. Dumps it off to Sullivan who juggles and drops it. And Randy White knocked a few syllables off Jaworski that Ooh, time. What a season he's had. Randy White, second, third leading tackler on the team with 55 individual tacklers. He's had 10 sacks as well. He keeps getting better and improving with every game. Jaworski had a string of six straight pass completions, but Randy White's rush and the low pass to Sullivan snapped it. Even on screen passes, when you get that kind of rush, you'll throw off the timing. And Harvey Martin, to me. So it is second and 10 from the 20. 34 seconds to go to the half. 14 to 7, Cowboys. And they give to Sullivan. He gets across the 25 to the 26 yard line, and the clock is running. That was a strange play, a very conservative play. Well, they're going to have to take that late touchdown into the half with them. That's bad enough. But anything else, if they would get another field goal to add on to that, that would be a demoralizing thing. I think they're playing a calculated game now and just go ahead and take a 14-7 to 7, uh, deficit into the locker room with them. Wade Key and Jerry Sizemore pulled to lead the way. Timeout now for the Eagles with 22 seconds to go to the half. Jaworski again chatting with Dick Vermeil. Vermeil was a quarterback coach under the Rams and Tommy Prothrow back in 1971. And he served under Chuck Knox with the Rams. So he went from professional ball to college ball, head coach at UCLA, and then to the pros as a head coach followed Mike McCormick. Tom Landry is the only coach they've had here. In fact, you might just as well say the one and only. Took him seven years to put together a winning organization here. Let Murchison, their owner, stood behind him the whole time. Quieted critics that wanted him fired by giving him a 10-year contract and said, you go ahead, complain for 10 more years. But he paid off for him. Of course, Landry's name in Texas is synonymous with football. He was a winning fullback at the University of Texas, and then he was an all-pro cornerback for the New York Giants. Third and four from the 26 with 22 seconds to go to the half. 14-7 Dallas. Randy White moving around, but he got back. And now Jaworski is setting up. Can't find anybody, and he has to eat it. All the men were covered. What? Randy White and Harvey Martin. Who are they going to give this sack to? Or is that when you get the half sack, which is probably the case right here? See Harvey Martin first there. Randy White just following suit. Well, that's the Dallas first sack of the day to give him 45. And for Jaworski, who was knocked flat eight times last week, he had been dodging a bullet until just then. So on fourth and uh, third and 12, he threw. And of course, now fourth and 12, they left the punt. Now what do the Cowboys do? Do they rush it? Or do they try to return it? Because they'll still have time for one play and perhaps kick a field goal or well, depending on how far the punt goes, they might try for a fair catch. It gives them a free kick from whatever area of the field. So we'll see if the Philadelphia Eagles, first of all, have Spike Jones kick it from just about his end zone. And then Butch Johnson, who has fair catch or fair caught, actually, two punts today, because if he calls another one. Jones will be punting from the five. And he just did get it away. And there's the fair catch with a flag on the play. 
roughing the punter for certain. Then everybody ran into him. Aaron Cowell, one of the leaders. Went. Bruce Huther, a rookie out of New Hampshire, was a little over anxious and over eager along with Aaron Kyle. They were charging in there. So the Eagles offensive team will go back on the field. So where it was fourth and 12 by roughing up the kicker, the Eagles will have at least one play with nine seconds to the half. There's a foul there running into the kicker. Number 55. Yep, that's defense. right, Bruce Huffman. First down. 57. 57. Free agent. It was a 35-yard punt, but it's all history now. The Eagles first and 10 on their own 23. The Cowboys scored the first time they got the ball. Then in the second quarter on an interception by Randy Logan and a 51-yard pass to Mike Hogan, the Eagles tied it up. But on the pass from Starbuck to Drew Pearson, the Cowboys took the lead again. The Eagles have two timeouts remaining in the half. We have nine seconds, and there's a little draw that gets the ball out across the 35-yard line. Timeout as Hogan moved it out across the 35. So two seconds to the half. And again, Jaworski coming over to talk to Vermeil. Now, why would you want to call two seconds of a timeout with two seconds remaining before the half, then? I have an idea that the Eagles are not just going to sit on the ball. You know, it was second and 12, and they had that sweep when they pulled the guards. Then it was third and 12, and he passed. He was going for broke. Then we had the infraction on the kicker. Now, after a draw play with two seconds left, and Jaworski has that kind of an arm, he might just try and go all the way. All right. I'll be here for now it. Now, we'll see. Watch him just fall on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, I have the scores of all the other ball games at halftime. Phyllis, Brent, and Irv will be along. We'll also get a report on golf out of Largo. The last we heard, Jerry Pate and Hollis Stacy leading in the championship with Curtis Strange and Nancy Lopez with three back. That was after the third round. And we will get a report on the fourth and final round today. Okay, first and ten, two seconds, and everybody out. So Jaworski will be all alone back there. No back staying in. Yes, sir. He's going to try. He cranked it up. And he's going deep. And he bobbled and dropped. And down on his knees, thinking of what a golden opportunity he had is Charlie Waters. But he was going for broke, which is what it appeared that Jaworski was going to do. And so it's halftime in Dallas. The Cowboys with 14, and the Philadelphia Eagles, why well, they have seven. Exactly two minutes left in the New York-St. Louis game, still 27-7 Giants. Chicago in the fourth quarter, trying to hold on to that 3-0 lead that they have over the tough Buccaneer defensive unit today. Walter Payton, he's gained about 63 yards so far. Here he is, but watch Selman, 63, come over and make sure he's down. And here is Leroy again. All-America from Oklahoma, top draft choice, taking it to Bob Avellini. Here's the play that turned it around. It was still scoreless. Gary Fensick picked off this pass by Hedberg. Now it's the Salmon brothers, Dewey and Leroy. They meet at the pass, and Walter is squeezed. Finally, Thomas connects. 3-0 in that ball game right now. Now how about the St. Louis New York Giants game? The Giants served warning on the first series of the afternoon against the Cardinals. The Cardinal defensive unit gave up those 55 points to Miami, and just maybe it was no fluke. Here's Bobby Hammond for a touchdown against the Cardinals. It was 7-0. Late in the first quarter, Hart rallied the Cardinals. He hit Wayne Morris, who was pushed out of bounds. They changed ends of the field. Hart went to Ike Harris for the touchdown. Hart's 12th TD pass of the year. It was 10-7 Giants. Hart dropping back. Badly thrown ball. Bryant intercepted. Went the distance for the touchdown. Giants leading St. Louis. 17-7 after that. Pasarczyk wanted his tight end. Gary Shirt. Cardinals with trouble in their defensive secondary. And you can see it illustrated here. 63 yards. Willie Spencer pounded across as the fourth quarter began. 27-7 inside of two minutes, sir. Brent, with almost two minutes to go in the fourth quarter in the Buffalo Bill Washington Redskins game, the Skins have the ball and lead by a score of 7-0 deep in Buffalo territory. 
Joe Feisman was the guy at quarterback who got the call of the starters today and went to Mike Thomas in the second quarter here, and the tailback takes the ball upfield for a nifty 15-yard gain, allowing the Redskins to get their only score of the day, and it's held up so far. Feisman rolls out, and it's number 84, Gene Fugit. Fugit catches the ball, and I watch him bowl over those tacklers. He goes in, and the Redskins are winning late in the fourth quarter by a score of 7 to nothing. Irv Green Bay is stopping Detroit 10 to nothing in the second quarter. How's the weather in Green Bay? Not very good. It is cold. It snowed early this morning. Trying to chip away the ice so the folks could sit down. Quarterback draw by Whitehurst. Goes for 19 yards to the Detroit 28. Whitehurst to Steve Odom. 18-yard gain down to the Detroit 6-yard line. Carroll carried it in for the game's only touchdown. Markle added a field goal. It is 10 to nothing. He was across the line. He broke the plane there. So the Lions protested, but they did not get the ball. Irv, what about the game we're watching? Irv, you know, the Dallas Cowboys have beaten the Philadelphia Eagles six straight times. And, of course, they're leading now at halftime by a score of 14 to 7 at Texas Stadium. And Roger Staubach had a pretty good first half. Here in the first quarter, he goes to Billy Joe Dupree. is tight end. He takes the ball down to the one-yard line. And Tony Dorsett does the rest. Quick trap inside touchdown. And Dallas took a 7 nothing lead. The Eagle defense has played well all year long, and strong safety Randy Logan, in my estimation, is one of the best. Here he picks off an interception, and a stall box pass here, and brings the ball up near midfield, giving the offense an opportunity to get off, to get started again. And Ron Jaworski goes to work, going to his running back, Mike Hogan. Hogan makes a nifty catch and run here, 49 yards all the way on this one for a touchdown, and the Eagles close the gap, and the score at this point in the second quarter was 7-7. But Roger Staubach knows how to get back in a hurry, and he goes to his wide receiver, Golden Richards. Richards makes the catch, takes the ball down to the 15-yard line, and from there, Staubach goes to the air again. You know who, Drew Pearson. Touchdown, and Dallas leads 14-7 at halftime. All right, 5.50 to go in Tampa Bay. Chicago has just scored a touchdown. They lead it 10 to nothing, And they figure to be tied with the Minnesota Vikings if the San Francisco 49ers keep it up. Here is Plunkett going to Jackson, who runs to the Minnesota 23-yard line. Delvin Williams, the other half of that tough running combination for the touchdown. It was 7-0. The opening kickoff in the second half. Here is Dave Williams, busting a tackle, getting good wedge blocking, coming up the middle, outrunning everyone for the score. It is now 17 to nothing. St. Louis, New York, a minute 10 left. And right now, let's go back to Texas Stadium. Vin Scully and Alex Hawkins. Vin? It's halftime at Texas with the Cowboys leading the Eagles 14 to 7. We'll be right back. It was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Well, everybody, Vin Scully along with Alex Hawkins at halftime here in Texas. In fact, the boys are just about ready to mix it up again, and the Cowboys leading 14-7. to 7. Any surprises? No, not really. I think it was a fairly well-played uh, first quarter. The Cowboys got a nice drive going, and from then on, it was just big plays. They dodged a couple bu bullets in Philadelphia that way in the early in the early going, so they could have been worse early, and they came back with a big play, the pass to uh, Hogan for the touchdown. Then Drew Pearson did his act again, and it's just about the way I figured it to be. It looked like Dallas might very well take over in the second quarter after Benny Barnes had blocked the punt, and they moved down to the 18-yard line, and that inside lateral to Preston Pearson for a, a touchdown, apparently. However, they were guilty of an infraction. Pat Donovan had pulled too early. And then you had the interception by Randy Logan, so that kept the Eagles in the ball game. But undaunted, Roger drove his ball club in the last two minutes to pick up the go-ahead touchdown. And that's the situation right now. And for the Eagles, same old story. they got to get points. Yeah, they got to get points, but they are coming up with some big plays, and they're not quitting. And that's what they've been the story of the Eagles all year. They just haven't been out of many ball games. I don't expect them to be out of this one. Well, we're just about ready to start the second half, so let's get down and take a look. We can also check some of the numbers as far as the first half is concerned. First downs, 11-7, and the yards rushing. The Eagles still unable to maintain much of a ground game, which has been one of their problems all year. Dallas, however, only rushed for 90. And then 30-yard difference in passing. 8 for 14 is Jaworski. 9 for 18 is Roger Staubach. The time of possession, Philadelphia finally caught up at one stage. The Cowboys had the ball for over 10 minutes, and the Eagles only four. But as you see, it wound up 18 minutes to 11. A final score, and so far the shocker of the day, the New York Giants have just knocked off the St. Louis Cardinals 27-7. to 7. 
And for the Cardinals, their fifth defeat. And a shocker indeed it was. And for Don Coriel and the Cardinals, to lose is one thing, but to only get seven points is really a shock. That is incredible. Okay, Efren Herrera really got his foot into that one. And it'll be Larry Marshall from the four. To the 15, to the 20, to the 25. And across the 25 to about the 27. And so the Eagles have relatively good field position, which has not been their story throughout the first half. Fourteen to seven in favor of Dallas. A two-yard run by Tony Dorsett, and a 16-yard touchdown pass from Roger Staubach to Drew Pearson. And the Eagles got on the boards on a 51-yard touchdown pass, Jaworski to Mike Hogan. First and ten now from the 27. Carmichael is right, Smith left. Hogan and Sullivan are the running backs. And Jaworski is after him right away to Smith. And he was off balance. He caught it and tumbled out of bounds immediately at the 32-yard line. So picked up five. That'll make it second and five for Ron Jaworski and his Eagles. Jaworski now is nine for 15. You know, the Eagle people refer to Jaworski as a rookie because it was surprising to me, too, even though you'd seen him start with the Los Angeles Rams. He is in his fourth year. He'd only started eight games for the Rams prior to joining the Eagles. Well, it's a big start for Ron now. Second down, a long four. Charlie Smith wide left, and Carmichael comes in on a wing. Sullivan behind Wade Key's block. It's out across the 35-yard line. Wade Key, an eight-year veteran who broke his arm in 75 through the key block to make it very close. Benny Barnes coming up to finally wrap him up. And there it is now as they post it officially for the crowd. That clinches the division title. Of course, Dallas would still like to win it anyway. Come up with their 10th win. The it Cardinals does. fall back seven and five. It does take the pressure off, though. Oh, and how? So the Eagles trying to capitalize on it. Third down and one. Ball on the 36. Jaworski sneaks, takes off, belt. Bob Brunick almost knocked his helmet off. Number 53, did he come in and hit Jaworski high? Boy, did Tom Landry pay him a tribute when he said that he was the finest first-year middle linebacker he'd ever coached. He'd been with guys like Leroy Jordan and Sam Huff and uh, Jerry Tubbs. With him to make a statement, watch the hit here. There. Mm. Harder than a yard dog's jawbone. But. <laughs> Meaner than a junkyard dog. You got it. <laughs> All right, they just did get the first down anyway. First and 10 from the 37. Play action fake to Hogan. Jaworski overthrows Carmichael, who was, had Lewis on one side of him, and he was thoroughly taken out of the play. And what an outstanding season that Randy White is having. I think certainly he'll end up in the Pro Bowl and perhaps all pro. He a little false start there. Watch him once he gets cranked up, though. He's got you, the upper body strength and the great mobility of a linebacker. You want to know some inside football on Randy White? Tell it to me, then. He has a tattoo, the road runner on his right thigh. <laughs> yeah, I pass that along. I wonder what part of Mexico he came back from. <laughs> Second and ten from the 37. How he got there, I have the faintest idea. Jaworski looking right, and down he goes. Harvey Martin, and that's a milestone for Martin. A sack, his second sack of the day, the 22nd of his career, and in Cowboy history, that ties him with George Andre at 22 sacks. And with the great career that Bob Lilly uh, had, who would have thought George An Andre would have held a club record? That's the way it is. And, of course, Harvey Martin figures to pick up a few more before he stood. A 14th round draft choice. Would you say that was a pleasant cowboy surprise? Unreal. The ball just on the 34 yard line where it is third and 13. Smith in a slot inside Carmichael Wright. Hogan and Sullivan the running back. Gregory trying to get in. Jaworski belts it, and it goes right through the hands of Charlie Smith. 
Hit him right in the hand. Yep. Good coverage there by Mark Washington, though. He had him covered all the way that time. That's a hard pass to catch. When you're running with the speed, he's got to cross the middle and have to go back against the grain. That's, that's tough. And it was no floater. He really ripped it. New England knocks off Atlanta. 16 to 10, a final. And Spike Jones, who has had one block by Benny Barnes today, three blocked this year, back on his own 20. Butch Johnson, a single safety on the Cowboy 25, takes it on the 28, and Butch sets sail. And he's going to be wrapped up by Manny Sistrunk and taken out. 12 minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cowboys 14 and the Eagles 7. Well, another shocker to go along with the Giants knocking off the Cardinals. San Francisco leading Minnesota 17 to nothing. So it looks like Dallas not only has a lock on it, but they're going to spend Christmas Day at home, and they'll be the host club on the 26th here in Dallas. Does anybody want to win the black and blue division? Maybe not. First and 10 on the 37 for the Cowboys. Saldy moves to the left side. Dorsett gets away as punting is decked by Herbert Scott. A fumble, and let's see, the Eagles have recovered. Boy, did John Bunning get wiped out by Herbert Scott, and Bunning is limping off the field. Let's see how it comes out here, where the ball comes free. It just pops out. Bunning certainly did. You see him go down right there. 78 there, Carl Harrison. The ball pops loose. I can't tell who picked that up. You see who picked that up? Looked like Bill Berge down there at the bottom. And big plays are made by big players once again. Oh, good block. There it is. No. Yep, Bergie got back on it. He sure did. Johnny Outlaw was there, and Bergie beat him to the ball. First and ten on the Cowboy 37. The Eagles in marvelous field position now. And Jaworski setting up to go down the right side, and he's got Crefley, the tight end, inside the 25. Benny Barnes knocks him down. First down, Eagles. Benny Barnes lost his footing that time. Crefley finding the open area that time. They were in a zone. See, take a look at it from the end zone. Jaworski back with plenty of time. Picking up Bill Gregory right there. Perfect strike. You see Barnes take through the dirt right there. Charlie Waters and a host of others. Bill Brunick in there. All right, first and 10 on the Cowboy 21-yard line. Carmichael in a slot inside Smith on a pitch back. Here comes Wilbert Montgomery, and he goes out of bounds. He was driving towards the 15-yard line, and he's knocked out at the 16 by Thomas Henderson. Wilbert Montgomery, just a rookie, but he was college football's all-time scorer with 76 touchdowns. And talking about touchdowns, San Francisco has added another. And that's in Bloomington, isn't it? In quiet Bloomington. Gracious me. How important was Fran targeting that ball club? Well, there's an indication right there. Second and five from the 16-yard line. Montgomery, the deep man back of Hogan, and now the back split. Hogan. Pretty good spin at the 15-yard line because holding him down at the ankles was Harvey Martin along with Randy White. I don't know whether Martin beat his man that early or whether no one blocked him. That time was a blocking mistake, but he was right there. He was waiting for it to develop. So he moved it to the 13-yard line. That'll make it third down and two yards to go. The Eagles trying to capitalize on a fumble by Tony Dorsett, recovered by Bill Berge. It is 14 to 7 Cowboys. The Eagles trying to nail him. Out of the eye, and it's Montgomery back of Hogan. Montgomery. Oh. And he ran into downtown Dallas traffic. Downtown Dallas is right. Mike Hegman, the first of many to touch him. Now you got to wonder what they're going to do because the Eagles' weakness all year has been field goal kickers. Mickemeyer, they just picked up the other day. In fact, this is his first day. He's the third field goal kicker for the Eagles this season. They started with Horst Muldman, went to Johansson, had no success with him, and now they're with Mick Mickemeyer, who the Falcons let go earlier this year. Measuring for the first down and an anxious Dick Vermeil watching, but they've still got almost a, more than a foot to go. Now does he have enough faith to let Nick Mickemeyer try it? Mickemeyer, number one, is staying on the sidelines. He has 
standing way down on about the 45 yard line so he is not coming in for sure. It is fourth and one. The ball is on the Cowboy 12 yard line. 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. 14-7 Dallas and a big play for Jaworski and company. Prepley on the right side. Carmichael on the left. Montgomery and Hogan are the running backs. Bate and Jaworski all along to Carmichael. Oh, touchdown for Harold Carmichael, his seventh touchdown pass of the year. Well, if you're going to gamble, go for the marbles, brother. They went for the whole thing and came off with it. Play action fake there. Carmichael just snuck out from under there and completely fooled the Dallas team. Wide open, 15 yards, and there's defender. Did they take it? Did Randy White take the fake? Yes, sir. if you're going to gamble for it, go for the broke. Well, Harold Carmichael, who has caught passes in 78 consecutive games and has come up now with seven touchdown passes this year. Jaworski has picked up two today. He has 18 touchdown passes. Mickemeyer trying to tie it up. Gabriel puts it down and has a flag. So let's see. Dallas might have had 12 men on the field. 12 men on the field. Dallas. You're beautiful. Good. You are beautiful. Okay, the kick was good. And it's 14-14. The Dallas and the Philadelphia Eagles are all tied up with 10.48 to go in the third quarter. It's the year of the Cowboys, 77. However, right now it's 14-14 as the Eagles tie it up. We have 10.48 to go in the third quarter. And the key play, of course, the fumble by Tony Dorsett and the recovery by Bill Berge that eventually led to the touchdown pass to Carmichael. Mickemeyer kicking off and kicking deep, and Johnson has to go way in the end zone. He'll run it out. Whoa. Johnson goes down at the 20-yard line. He was hit head-on by Terry Tortolo out of UCLA. Don't you like the way that Butch Johnson approaches it, though? Boy, he runs with reckless abandon. I know that's used a lot, but that's exactly how he does. He is fully intends to advance the football. He just loves it, and he got one yard, really, on the play. If he just stayed where he was, they'd have brought it out to the 20, and with all of that, he got it to the 21. A final score, Washington losing to Dallas last week 14 to 7 still had enough to come back and shut out Buffalo 10 to nothing. Washington is now 7 and 5 the Cardinals losing today 7 and 5. And it is second and 5 on the 26 with 10 minutes left to go in the third quarter all even at 14 apiece. Butch Johnson is wide left Drew Pearson wide right Dorsett and Newhouse in the backfield. Staubach fakes once, dumps to Dorsett, and he can't hold it. Lazatich then knocks him down. Pass, pass very poorly thrown by Roger Staubach that time. A simple pass that didn't go over about 12 yards in the air. Let's watch Tony Dorsett. Breaking out of the backfield, like I say, when you do that, and then sliding back after those linebackers cleared, the pass is thrown back over his behind his right shoulder. Lazatich right there. In case you were not with us at the time, Charlie Johnson, who means a great deal of the front three of the Eagles, wiped out by Ralph Neely and does not figure to play anymore. And so Pete Lazatech backing up and doing a solid job for him. Third and five from the 26. And Staubach backs off into the shotgun. Preston Pearson alongside of him. Staubach down the right side, a diving catch, and let's see, did they rule catch by Pearson? They did. Drew Pearson making a great catch at the 39. A free agent who went to the Pro Bowl and made all pro last year. Gracious me. When the Cowboys get in trouble, you can count on them going to Pearson. Look at this catch. A thing of beauty, and that is professional football. You know, when Drew caught the touchdown pass earlier, he had caught a pass in 43 straight games, which is a Dallas club record. First and 10 on the 39, with 9.15 to go in the third. Pearson in motion, inside handoff to Newhouse. He ran right on by, sticking his hand out was LeMaster. And you're not going to bring Newhouse down with a hand. You know, sir. His center gravity is around his knees. <laughs> he has such tremendous thighs. 
that he has to have his pants specially made, and you can understand why when you look at them. His thighs look like other people's chest. His foundation is built on very firmly, too. He's got five inches across his feet. Number 44, Robert Newhouse. And you can see Starbucks numbers as he comes out second and six at the Dallas 43. The pitch back to Dorsett. That's the second time Mahalik has had to catch Dorsett from behind. And that's a long way from the center's nose to Tony Dorsett's back. Look at it on the replay here. Good blocking out in front by Herbert Scott. Saw Herbert on the ground, and from now on, brother, that's the beauty of having a guy like that. It gives you an added dimension. He can, in fact, look at those receivers blocking downfield. And how do they do it? You've got to get rid of Bill Berge before you can do anything against the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's Herbert Scott doing the number on Bill Berge. Even the best of them get rode sometimes. Well, a 29-yard scamper by Dorsett. It's first and 10 on the Eagle 23. Play action fake to Dorsett. Starbuck setting up to unload. Gets away from Hairston. He's finally decked as he throws the ball out of bounds. Ooh, if they don't call pass interference on that, they, don't, they ought to take the rule out. Manny Sistrunk really flattened Starbuck. There was nobody within 20 yards of where he threw that football. Bill Berger can't understand it any more than I can. What's happening? What is happening? What's Take a look at it again. Decking. Roger Staubach with a lot of time to throw. First looks left. Nobody over there. They had a rotation to that side. Had second givings about going ahead with it. Now look where he threw it. Well, there's your picture. Second and 10 on the 23. Dorsett, the deep man out of the eye. And it's Dorsett. And he gets across the 15. And only a rolling block knocked him down. Johnny Sanders just threw a block at him to bring him down. Once again, the Cowboys going back, running left again. Having some success over there. Tony Dorsett on the move. Tony going to have to get a smaller helmet and a bigger head. And checking Dorsett's numbers now, he has rushed for 92 yards. Yeah, Tony, we're talking about you. He has also caught a couple. Dorsett has caught three passes for 24 yards. So as usual, he is making vital contributions to the Dallas offense. He plans to stay here in Dallas, too. Just recently bought a new home here. In Plano. In Plano. The ball on the 14-yard line, where it is third and one. Well, Staubach on a sneak. He just followed over the right shoulder of Herbert Scott. Is he a determined football player? He went after that first down. The Staubach, who had to sneak in for a vital first down and touchdown against Washington to help win, Sneaks now for the first down. Watch him go just off the right shoulder. And that's how he feels about getting it. He plans to make it. Look at that lunge there. You know, they, a lot of players have commented on him, and the number one thing that comes out of the mouth is what a great leader he is. Well, he picks it up. First and ten does Roger Staubach. And the ball on the Eagle 12-yard line. Dorsett the deep man. And it's Dorsett they call upon. And he is tripped and goes down short of the five-yard line. There are three Cowboys shaken up on the play. Scott and Neely and yet another. And the other... John Fitzgerald, I believe. ...was a doubtful starter because of the bad knee, and he evidently playing in pain is really hurting now. This could really up upset the uh, game plan of the Cowboys, too, because they're going to have to make several adjustments in that offensive line. As we see, Tony Dorsett trying to pick his way. As you see the Dallas front line moving off the football and dominating line, line of scrimmage on that play. And for John Fitzgerald, it is definitely the knee, though he is in bad shape for the moment. 14-14, early in the third. John Fitzgerald re-injuring the knee. He will give way now to Tom Rafferty at center. Second and four, and the ball on the Eagles' six-yard line. Tony Dorsett. Inside the five before he is knocked down. Hawk, we've got a moment. 
now that they have to make a switch, Fitzgerald out, Rafferty at center, and Lawless moving up to guard, what exactly is the problem as far as center is concerned? Well, they're going to have to move Tom Rafferty for his regular spot at right guard. He's only got two years' experience. To move him over to center, they're going to move Burton Lawless, who is a three-year veteran, over to the right tackle. Now you've got Rafferty, who's not familiar with the position, calling offensive line assignments, which centers do. That'll change the entire blocking in some cases all the way line, across the line of scrimmage and could, could confuse the Cowboys. Well, it's third and one on the three. Preston Pearson now in a full house joining Dorsett and Newhouse. Play action fake to Preston Pearson. Down goes Starbuck. It was Art Toms, number 80, who came around to chase him. And in avoiding Tom, Starbuck then was swallowed up by Hairston and company. Where in the world did they get Art Toms? From Got him from Oakland? Oakland? A yep. trade, I guess, huh? Mm -hmm. Play action Tom's. fake there. I think probably Starbuck had that in mind. There might be some confusion now, offensive blocking assignments. Let's go ahead and pass it. That way it's simple. Block the man head up you. So it is fourth down and five. The ball on the seven-yard line. And Efren Herrera is 17 out of 24. And he rarely misses inside the 30-yard line. He'll be kicking from the 14. It's a 24-yard field goal attempt, and it is good. And so the 24-yard field goal by Efren Herrera, the Dallas Cowboys once again take the lead, 17 to 14. 17 to 14 Cowboys. You can see a final of Pittsburgh Steelers getting it all together now at the end of the year. Knock off Seattle 30 to 20. A report on John Fitzgerald, it was not his knee. It was his ankle that caused him to leave the game. We'll await a further report. So Herrera who just kicked a 24-yard field goal to put the Cowboys in front. Now kicking off, Wilbert Montgomery will back to the goal line. To the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and down he goes at the 31. Wilbert Montgomery, a rookie out of Abilene Christian. Very determined runner there. The Eagles have not been able to really muster a drive. They've scored two touchdowns. But both touchdowns are the direct result of turnovers. One was an interception by Randy Logan, and the other, of course, was a fumble by Dorsett, recovered by Bill Berge. And an Eagle player is down, as you can see. Seventeen to fourteen Cowboys, four minutes and thirty seconds to go in the third quarter. Shaken up was Vince Papali. And evidently okay. He has done a marvelous job getting down underneath punch today. And that time on the special unit, blocking for Wilbert Montgomery, Papali is shaken up. Like a lot of boys in South Philadelphia, you got a lot of stories to tell, Ben. Yeah, he didn't play football in college. First and 10 from the 31. 17 14 Cowboys. Carmichael is left, Smith is right. Hogan and Montgomery behind Jaworski. And Jaworski throwing out to Montgomery. Oh, what a collision with D.D. Lewis. End of story at the 35. Who won that battle, do you suppose? Both of them are getting up. What a shot D.D. Lewis put on him. Or was it your sinuses? Who gets the best of this? I think it's a Mexican standoff. Look at it. Gracious me. So Montgomery moves it across the 35 to the 36 yard line. We're at second and five. Carmichael in a slot left this time inside Smith. And Montgomery going to carry it again. He just missed getting eaten up by Jones, so he was swallowed up by Harvey Martin. Too tall pulled the Batman on him that time, didn't he? Too tall went flying by, and Harvey said, come to me. <laughs> CBS Sports Spectacular, Saturday, December the 17th, with the WBC World Welterweight Championship, the 1977 National Hot Rod Association World Champions, and among others, Shirley Muldowney and Don Garlitz. It was held at the Ontario Motor Speedway several weeks ago. Then the U.S. Professional Arm Wrestling Championship and the World's Strongest Men. What a slate. That's the CBS Sports Spectacular, Saturday, December 17th. Third and four from the 36th. 
Jaworski just did get it away. He was submarine as both Hegman and Henderson came in. Randy oh. White was in there quick, too. Everybody. Boy, when the Dallas Cowboys get it together, they either look bad together or they look great together. When they all come, it seems like everybody's there. Jaworski shaking up a little bit. Watch Randy White, number 54. How quick. And look at, there you go, 56 Tom Henderson with that speed. Gracious. So Jaworski limping a little bit as he comes off the field. Fourth and four. And so Spike Jones will be kicking to Butch Johnson. Another low pass. He got on a bounce and got it away and got a good one away. Johnson has to go back to the 10-yard line. Flag on the play. Franklin has gotten him from behind and brought him down at the 15, but there's a flag at the 35. Great coverage by the Eagles that time and a great play by Spike Jones handling that football like that. 56 yards worth of punt. And a bad, bad snap. Now let's await the call. Crackback. Look at that. He blocked it just like a good catcher would, didn't he, Ben? Get your body in front of him. And a marvelous play, evidently out of that kick formation. One of the wide receivers came back in and decked the cowboy in a crackback block, and he was caught at it. We have an illegal cut, illegal cut, defense, first down. Illegal cut is charged against Dallas. So that makes it an automatic first down for the Eagles. At first, we thought it was an infraction against Philadelphia, but the Eagles keep the ball on their own 41 first and 10. That's a big break. 17-14 Dallas. Montgomery and Hogan behind Jaworski. And it's Montgomery trying to get outside Lewis, and Aaron Kyle wrapped him up. Cowboys are aroused now, playing with some intensity. D.D. Lewis stringing the play out, though Montgomery couldn't get around him, and then Kyle just came up to hit him. Kyle playing with a broken left hand. In fact, he's been playing the last four or five games as Aaron Kyle. you will watch number 25 now come up for the hit. You see left the bandage hand and a on his left arm, that's right. The number one draft choice for the Cowboys. I believe that's right. Second and 12. Kyle was number one in 76 out of Wyoming. Jaworski trying to throw to Smith and too tall had his hand up in the clouds. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. He really impaired his vision that time. He couldn't find it at all. A reminder, Elliot Gould and O.J. Simpson host an hour of entertainment on the 1977 Heisman Trophy Award Special. Among the many stars appearing, Phyllis George, Reggie Jackson, Connie Stevens, and Leslie Uggen. The presentation of college football's finest hour, that's Thursday, 10 Eastern, 9 Central and Mountain Time. Third and 12, for the moment, the Eagles unable to take advantage of the big play, the illegal cut charged to Dallas. Third and 12 from the 40 of Philadelphia. And Jaworski to Montgomery, and Henderson brings him down immediately at the 45. So they're six yards away from the first down, and they'll have to give the ball up again. <laughs> 17 to 14 in favor of the Dallas Cowboys. Spike Jones going back to kick. And it's Butch Johnson standing on his 15-yard line for Dallas. Nobody coming, and this time Spike really drills it. Johnson at the 15, and Montgomery, Wilbert Montgomery, drills him. And he's playing inspired ball, as you can imagine, a kid from Abilene Christian coming back to Texas to play in the pros. The NFL on CBS starts on Saturday next week. Washington versus St. Louis. 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Washington winning today. St. Louis losing to the Giants. They each have the identical record now of seven victories and five defeats. Pretty much on the line in that game. Isn't it? And how? Winner take all. The 40-yard punt by Spike Jones. 
First and ten from the 15 for Dallas. Staubach pitching to Dorsett. Randy Logan along with Art Toms closing in on him at the 15. Dallas finally realizing they're in for a football game. For sure. Eagles much, much aroused. Dallas responding very nicely. The Eagles in their last seven losses have lost by a total of 36 points. Of course, they play somewhat inspired ball at home. They are one and five on the road this year. The worst Philadelphia Road Club back in 1970, they were 0 and 7. Second and 11 from the 14. Newhouse and Dorset. Both backs go out, and there's a dump off to Newhouse. And LeMaster came over to tie him up along with Art Toms, Hairston, and Mahalik. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard gain, huh? That picked up one to the 15. That's all. So the Eagles, who tied it up 14 to 14, only to see the Cowboys come back on a 24 yard field goal by Efren Herrera. Now Cowboys leading 17 to 14. One minute and two seconds left in the third quarter. Third and ten. Out of the shotgun goes Starbuck. And Roger going too low. Intended for Preston Pearson. Bill Berge along with John Bunning just sat on him. There's two good linebackers right there. Take a look at Bill Berge. Pass coverage against the run. It doesn't make any difference. If he isn't the best linebacker in football, he's among them certainly. He was last year's all inside NFC. out on Preston. Got him covered like a dirty shirt. Look at that. <laughs> we have 46 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Dallas holding on to a 17 to 14 lead, and it is fourth and ten. And Danny White bothered somewhat with a groin pull, trying to root it out of there. Larry Marshall all alone on the Eagle 45. Marshall watching as Benny Barnes was right there on top of him. And Barnes then comes out of the chute breathing fire. Doesn't he though? And isn't that, wow. isn't that punter Danny White something? He's quite an athlete. Not only did he get a nice kick out of it, he got it out of bounds with no run back. 49 yards for a fellow who has a groin pull. That's really something. Say, don't let these sly con artists, Pete and Mac, pull a switch on you. Hang in there for great entertainment. When they switch, switch to Monday night, starting tomorrow at 10, 9 Central and Mountain Time. Oh, and everything's fine in Dallas. We're 38 seconds to go in the third, and another eagle is shaken up on the play, and that would be Mitchell. He comes off the field, Martin Mitchell, number 48, led to the sideline like an injury to the left arm or left shoulder. Papali, we get a report, also has a bruised shoulder. So it is first and ten from the Eagle 36. Carmichael left. Hello, Ed George. Ed George just couldn't wait to get a pop at Big Ed Jones. And George <laughs> beats himself on the helmet. He was so angry. So why in such a hurry to go nowhere? <laughs> Ed George was a fourth round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He yeah, played up in Canada for two or three years, came back with the Colts for a year before going over to Philadelphia. He played for the Montreal Alouettes of the Canadian Football League for five years. All right, the ball at the 31 now, first and 15. Smith wide right, Carmichael left. Sullivan and on his own effort he got it out across the 35 because there wasn't anybody opening up a hole for him. You just said it on his own effort. Tom Sullivan he was in the backfield with Chuck Foreman at the University of Miami. He's been the leading rusher in years past. This year I guess Mike Hogan came into today's game with uh, all over 400 yards which is not outstanding. Jaworski is 12 for 22 for 143 yards and one touchdown. That was a 51 yard bomb to Mike Hogan.
Then he threw a touchdown pass to Harold Carmichael. And time runs out. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Dallas 17, Eagles 14. We'll pause for a word from your local station. Mel's pain in his back becomes a pain in the neck for Alice tonight at 9.30, 8.30 Central and Mountain on CBS. you just heard was that uh, a thank thin... you very much. <laughs> it is 17 to 14 in favor of the Dallas Cowboys as we start the fourth and final quarter and the Eagles if they have been all year frustratingly close but there's still no cigar second and 11 from the Eagle 35. Smith inside Carmichael in a slot right. Hogan and Sullivan and now they send Crepley shake him loose as the tight end on the left side. Jaworski intended for Hogan. Pass interference will be called against Aaron Kyle. And I don't think there's any question about the call being accurate. He came right up his back. He had Kyle beaten and there was a wide open gap up the middle so Aaron gave him a shove. Aaron Kyle is not going to make any big to do over it. He realized he did it. I tell you, my heart goes out to these Philadelphia Eagles. With the limited talent that they have on the ball club, they will not quit. No, a lot no can way. be said Holding for that. They number stay 25, in every game. Defense, first down. Look at the cover. There you see it right there. So right. Aaron Kyle all over him. Over Mike Hogan. First down for the Eagles on their own 40-yard line. Plenty of time, just the start of the fourth quarter. 17 to 14, Dallas. Carmichael left and Smith right. There goes Sullivan, crawling. Boy, he just refuses to give up. You think Vermeule's not getting the full mileage out of all these players from the Philadelphia team? They are putting out their utmost, and they love him, too. I think he's got a bright, bright future, Ben. So Tom Sullivan... Knee touch shy of the 45. They'll spot it on the 44. Yeah, Dick Vermeil given a five-year contract by Leonard Toast, and he appears to be the one to lead the Eagles out of the wilderness. They've been in it for a long time. Second and six from the 44. Hogan wrapped up by Bill Gregory, and that's the end of that journey. Bill Gregory, another one of those Cowboys that just signed a lot of contracts, a lot of one-year contracts. He's going to be with them for the next four years for sure. So it is, so it is third and six. The Cowboys looking past. So Lewis and Bruning come out. Mark Washington comes back in the ballgame along with Benny Barnes and Mel Renfro. So Jaworski faced with a third and six to keep the drive alive from the 44. Crefley is wide left. Smith inside Carmichael, slot right. Hogan stays in to block. And Jaworski is going to be spun around on his numbers. Martin hit him, too tall. Jones hit him. Pugh and White, the whole front four was in there. Yes, sir. And that's what you saw and see when the Dallas Cowboys put the pass rush on. Look how disciplined. No one really gambling and getting out of their lane. If you see, they still have containment on the outside by Jones and Martin. Pressure from the inside by Gregory. There you see Too Tall. There you see Gregory. And more to come. That Martin was again. And then there's White. <laughs> they do play as a unit, don't they? Fourth and 12. Spike Jones got it away and puts Johnson fair catching the ball on the 15. Uh oh, he could have got a couple yards return on that. He had room to return that one. 
So Butch Johnson, fair catches. The Cowboys will put it in play on their own 16-yard line, leading 17-14. Second, CBS Sports proudly presents the Cotton Bowl with the number one ranked undefeated Texas Longhorns taking on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. That's the Cotton Bowl, January 2nd. The Cowboys putting it in play first and 10 on their own 16 yard line. Dorsett and Newhouse moving around a lot. They finally settle down, and in motion goes Jay Saldy. And there goes Tony Dorsett. Record. The longest run, touchdown run from scrimmage in the history of a franchise. Look at the big hole opening up, and you're about to see why they wanted Anthony Dorsett. Say goodbye. On a play like that, you automatically wonder about Bill Berg. Yes, you do. Let's see what did happen to Berg. Well, he had Tom Rafty, who's having a great season. They had a little stun on that time. It helped his block a little bit. And all of a sudden. So Tony Dorsett breaks it open. Efren Herrera makes it good. And the Cowboys are now leading by 10. Dorsett, an 84-yard scamper. And so the Cowboys, 24. Philadelphia, 14. 13 minutes and two seconds left to go in the game. Tony Dorsett averaging a little more than 10 yards a carry now thanks to that club record 84 yard scamper. He had gone 77 against St. Louis and Dallas leading handily 24 to 14 and Efren Herrera ready to kick off. The Eagles trying to regroup and it'll be Montgomery from the goal line behind the wedge gets out to the 20 Benny Barnes brings him down at the 23. For years, they said there was one degree that Dallas missed, and that was that breakaway back. The guy could break it open. Well, they have that ingredient now. Yes, they have. They look long and hard for it. They've had some good backs here, including one of them across the way, Don Perkins, who was a good back here, but never have they had the breakaway speed. Dwayne Thomas was the closest they had to it, I guess. And of course, Dwayne, they didn't keep him here very long. Preston Pearson, who is a great story in himself, has carried prior to today just once in the last two games. So Dorsett is just taking over at that position now. A little by little, game by game. First and ten from the 23. On a draw to Mike Hogan, Randy White takes him down. Bob Brunig on top. For the Eagles, they have to be a little demoralized right now. They have been so close. They were down 7 nothing and tied. They were down 14-7 and tied. They gave up a field goal. But now an 84-yard run by Dorsett, and you can feel a sag as you look down there in the Philadelphia Spirits. But on the other hand, this is where you see whether you're well coached or not. You see the character of the team, and look at Tony. He's kind of happy about that. Oh, I should say. Second and eight from the 25. Martin trying to come in on the right side, and the pass will be no good. It was caught by Charlie Smith, but he was out of town. Not have both feet in bounds. Could not keep both of them. The official right on the spot there. Well, Jaworski, who has thrown for two touchdowns to Mike Hogan and to Harold Carmichael, he is 13 for 24, good for 154 yards. Another thing, Jaworski has thrown for a touchdown, at least one touchdown pass in the last 10 games for the Eagles. By the way, we have another footnote on Tony Dorsett as we look at this. Minnesota coming back now, 24-21 in the fourth. They were down 24-0. That's not easy to do against that 49er defense either. Third and eight on the 25 for the Eagles. 24-14 Dallas. 12 minutes left to go in the game. Look out, Harvey Martin. Oh Harvey Martin. And that's his 23rd sack. What a year for Harvey Martin. Did he storm in there with an inside rush? I've been watching it all day, and Stan Waters has been had a little game on. Harvey asked free. for the ball, and they have given it to him. And he's going off the field with the ball. And, and that's an all-timer for a lineman. Yes, sir. 
Harvey a, Martin. He's a frenzied type player. He doesn't want to be called too mean. They have now come up with Martinized. So he takes you to the cleaners. Had the little game on and someone didn't pick it up. Don't know how they blocked that. Sometimes they use zone blocking on, on those twists. Sometimes you use man for man. But either way, Harvey Martin put the lid on. Spike Jones kicking to Tony Hill, who takes it inside the 45. And Hill hit by Tortolo, brought down by Franklin, shy of midfield. One other note while we have a moment. With his run of 84 yards, Tony Dorsett has now broken the Dallas record for rushing in one game. The previous record was 153 by Calvin Hill. So it's a big day for the Cowboys. They're leading 24-14. Well, it's a big day for Harvey Martin, as you see. He breaks George Andre's cowboy record of sacks. He had 22. This is his third of the day. to give him 23. Also, another fellow who will remember today, Tony Dorsett, has rushed for 184 yards, breaking Calvin Hill's cowboy record of 153. And Tony has also tied Dwayne Thomas for most touchdowns, rushing with 11. And he figures to break that before the year is out. First and ten, the ball at midfield. Drew Pearson in motion. Staubach to Newhouse, grabbed by Art Combs by the ankle, and then they bend him backwards. That's one of those two linemen get you and make a wish. You run north and I'll run south. We'll see how the ball carrier comes. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. You might be leading. It might be called a comfortable lead, but you still have to go into that pile. Yes, sir. Now it's going to be interesting to see that the Dallas Cowboys have the killer instinct that sometimes I think they lack. And there's Dwayne Thomas. So well, Dwayne he's on He's still hand. number one. In his own mind, he's still number one. Well, he better be number one A and B. It's an entry. Staubach looked and looked and then finally went down. Art Tom's number 80 making his presence felt in the middle of that. So it is third and nine, and Preston Pearson comes in along with Golden Richards. Robert Newhouse goes out. We have 10 minutes and 32 seconds left to go in the ball game. Cowboys 24 and the Eagles 14. It was 14 to 7 halftime Dallas, and it got to 14 14, 17 14 Dallas. And now the Cowboys are leading by 10, thanks to that 84-yarder by Tony Dorsett. Third and nine for Staubach, out of the shotgun. And it is picked off by Randy Logan. That's his second interception of the day. Logan is still on his feet and still in bounds at midfield. And finally dragged down at the 40 and looked like... He was going to go. Does that tell you a little bit about the character of the Eagle team? I'm convinced. Lemieux's got them headed in the right direction, and look out from here on out. So Randy Logan finally brought down by Billy Joe Dupre. There from the end zone, a little blitz on that time, which they didn't, well, they always send one person on passing situations. Beautiful reception here. And a fine job of running, too. Not necessarily the right direction, but he should have headed up the field there. You see, broke the tackle, but very determined. And the Cowboys don't seem to be too anxious about tackling. So the Eagles have it first and ten on the Cowboy 38. Carmichael is right. Smith is left. Play action fake to Sullivan. And Randy White throws it and caught by Charlie Waters. So he threw it away and Charlie Waters intercepted it. All the inexperience came out there, didn't it? If you're going to ground it, go ahead and ground it. Don't risk an interception there. It could have been worse. That could have gone for a touchdown. Jaworski can't find anybody open downfield. Got the strong rush there by Randy White. Threw it down. Not out there. Not around Charlie Waters. His third interception of the season. He was trying to find Mike Hogan. And instead, Waters takes it back. So back-to-back -back interceptions by Logan and then Waters in Dallas has it first and 10 on their own 47, leading 24 to 14. So let's look at that interception again as Ron Jaworski shows the inexperience. The reason he has thrown so many interceptions this year. It'll come with experience. But that's his 20th of the season. That's Tony Dorsett carrying across midfield. The Cowboys had it first and 10 on their own 47. So Dorsett picks up a couple. Just prior to that handoff, he had rushed for 184 yards. 
So Dorsett having a big day, and of course he has the outstanding run of the day, an 84-yard touchdown run that would appear to have broken the ball game open. And unlike Walter Payton, he doesn't have to carry the ball 40 times a game, and it should last a lot longer in the league. Second and six from the Eagle, 49. Starbuck pitching to Dorsett, and Dorsett goes down. Art Toms has him by the knees. How many times now that Dorsett will be called on to carry? Dorsett has caught three passes. And he has carried 20 times. And again, Philadelphia not giving up. Look at the pursuit there. Art Tom's coming in and looking pretty well to me. Cincinnati knocks off Kansas City 27 to 7. That's a final. Cincinnati finally getting their act together after such a slow start. Third and six. The ball on the 49. Out of the shotgun. Burnham putting on a little heat, but he dumps it and gets it off to Preston Pearson. And Pearson goes down, but not before he picks up the first down inside the Eagle 40. Could you tell he had been a basketball player in college? Look at all the bobbing and with a pick and roll. Oh, you see him do it so often. Watch Preston Pearson, who did not play college football, as everybody knows, who did play basketball at Illinois. And look, rolling there and rolling back again. Preston, of course, played three years with Baltimore, five with Pittsburgh. He's got 11 years of experience tucked away. And he gets the first down. The Cowboys have it first and 10 on the Eagle, 39. Seven minutes, 45 seconds left in the game. Staubach on a draw to Dorsett. And he's across the 35. Lamaster hanging on for dear life. He just brings you to the edge of your seat when he gets his hands on the ball. Because any second. Anthony Dorsett. One of the many stories down here in Dallas. A reminder, our CBS Sports Spectacular on Saturday, December 17th. We have the WBC World Welterweight Championship, Palomino versus Palacios. The 1977 National Hot Rod Association World Championship. The U.S. Professional Arm Wrestling Championship. And the World's Strongest Men. All coming up Saturday, December 17th on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Second and five from the 34, Robert Newhouse. Shaken up on that play in a head-to-head -head collision was Bill Berge. And Berge on his knees. He met Newhouse head on. He's okay, but you could hear some music. Maybe Bill Berge knew what he was talking about when he said the Dallas Cowboys were the best team in football. And he didn't say divide conferences either. He said the best team in football. Berge really took a lick. It was just a head-on collision between Berge and Newhouse, but Newhouse had the impetus and Berge lost that one. Mm. So Charlie Johnson was wiped out early and was sent to the pits. Vince Papali has a bruised shoulder. And now we see Bill Berge shaken up on that head-to-head -head collision with Robert Newhouse. Well, Berge suffering an injury apparently around the right eye, maybe the eyebrow. And you can just know he's going to be back in the ball game oh, as soon as he gets that repair. Third and two from the 31. Dorsett with Herbert Scott leading the way, and he has a couple. Herbert Scott, number 68, threw a good block on Terry Totolo, the middle linebacker for Frank LeMasters, and that picked it up. Scott, not particularly having a great season, has had a fine day today. He's got a hamstring, I think. Yeah, he's been trouble with injuries all year. A fine block by Herbert Scott, the guard who pulled. John Fitzgerald, by the way, remember he left the ball game, and Alex was explaining about what problems that could be to the line. Well, he's okay and back in there at center, although limping. he limps noticeably as he gets over the ball. First and 10 from the 27 for Dallas, leading 24-14 with 5.30 left in the game. Stavak gets it to his man, and his man is Newhouse. Inside the 15, a great effort by Robert Newhouse. It was that indeed. Not known for his pass catching, catching abilities. Bob Newhouse did a fine job that time. Roger Stallback with just so much time. They double palms, as you see. Well, they're doubling everybody. Look at the spin. Interesting to watch a lineman 
on that play, Manny Sistrunk thought Starbuck has got so much time he must have delivered the ball. And as Sistrunk came back off the line to go deep, Starbuck still was holding the ball. A great point, and you're totally accurate as usual, Ben Scully. <laughs> First and ten from the 14. 450 left in the game. Anthony Dorsett, nowhere. Who do you think made the tackle? The guy who was injured just a moment ago, double sixes, Bill Burke. As long as I'm out here, I might as well make the tackle. Yep. Let's watch him again. He's just a joy to watch play. Nobody blocked him that time. I missed the assignment somewhere. There's a flag on the play, so let's here's the call. Illegal procedure. Dallas. So a legal procedure against Dallas, unofficially, that would be, I believe, the seventh penalty charged against Dallas. The Eagles have been penalized four times. Dallas lost a touchdown on one penalty, but they were able to regroup. Four minutes and 46 seconds left to go. Roger Staubach. A nice afternoon for him. 13 out of 26 for 143 yards and one touchdown. Credit whoever you want to for the imagination of the Cowboy offensive plan, but it's working nicely. I want to check the yardage, too. Make it 193 yards for Staubach passing. Anthony Dorsett just running by people. He got by Sistrunk and he got by Bergie. And only shy of the 10 yard line, Mihalik finally got him. Didn't he some? Oh, marvelous. Let's watch it. There's Herbert Scott again. That's also Tom Rafty, both pulling out there in front. No, that's just poor tackling. Poor tackling by the Eagles that time. Yeah, he busted Bergie. That's over 200 yards now. Dorsett has carried 23 times for 206 yards. What a show he's putting on. Second and six from the ten. Uh-oh, fumble. Loose ball. Eagles recover. And the Eagles recover, and it's LeMaster who recovered it at the ten-yard line. Take a look at it. Just He never had control of the ball there. He pulls away. It's impossible to determine whose fault that is. And I don't think even Roger or his center knows. So LeMaster recovers the fumble, and Fitzgerald is still on the field. Fitzgerald was hurt again. This is the second time that John has been banged up. Fitzgerald is part of the Irish Mafia, along with Rafferty and Donovan down here, but he's hurting today. 24-14 Dallas, 3.50 left. At the start of the ball game, that John Fitzgerald was banged up. He had a bad knee. He's going to have surgery in the offseason, and that he would not start, and they doubted if he'd even play. But Fitzgerald, a seven year veteran out of Boston College, insisted on playing. When he was introduced to this crowd of 60,000, he limped out onto the field, but he played. He went down with an ankle injury earlier, came back to play some more, and he has just gone down again and is being limped, helped off the field. So, John Fitzgerald, banged up refuses to sit down say 56 minutes is enough on, on uh, with a torn cartilage one other note about Tony Dorsett as we have this moment to pass it to you Dorsett has rushed for 162 yards in the second half so he broke the club record in a half and that's about what he's been playing of games too, a half a game first half. and ten for the Eagles on their own ten 350 left in the game Gregory almost jumped off sides and here he comes anyway and a dump off on the right side to Hogan and he's going to be swallowed up and they're going to lose a couple of yards on the play and number seven Jaworski all he saw was 77. Bill Gregory is a whole lot better football player than most people give him credit for he's never been a regular but this is a spot duty and been very valuable to the, the Cowboys in years past. So Ron Jaworski, and in checking Jaworski's numbers today, he is 14 for 26 for 152 yards, two touchdown passes, one interception. Second and 12 from the eighth, so they lost two yards on the play. Three minutes left in the game. Bogan and Sullivan behind Jaworski. And the backs come out. And the pass... Great catch by Sullivan, and again, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. He's just shy of the 10-yard line, so it'll be third and 11. 
Well, it's an impossible situation for a young quarterback, a young team, a relatively young team like the Eagles. Situations like that, playing against a very veteran Dallas Cowboy team, so well schooled, so well rehearsed. But that man right there, Tom Landry, what a great job he and his coaching staff do. There's another man, Gil Brandt, what a great job he's done finding talent and developing talent on this Dallas team. The Dallas Club on their way to their 10th win with only two losses. And after today, they will go to San Francisco and finish up at home against Denver. That should be quite a meeting. Jaworski, the little time to set up, intended for Harold Carmichael with Mark Washington and Mel Renfro right there with him. And that will be that as the Eagles will have to give up the ball. But the big play, I think you look back, the Eagles were very much in the game. It was 17 to 14, but the Eagles were battling. And then Tony Dorsett ran for 84 yards and all the air came out of the balloon. That and a key interception by Jaworski when they could have gotten themselves back in the thing. That's yeah, that's right, Charlie point. Water. Yes, sir. Randy Logan has picked off two of Roger Staubach's passes. One eventually led to a touchdown for the Eagles. But it's a Dallas ball game with 2.50 left. Spike Jones getting it out of there. But he was in such a hurry, he almost hit off his knee. Cliff Harris will be spun around and down he goes. Eric Johnson wrapped him up. I don't know why Cliff Harris is not a rodeo rider. Great day. Reminds me of Larry Mayhan, the things he does. Bill Gregory tried to block the punt. You see him rolling around like a loose ball. What do you see? I think he had a notion to maybe run it this time. Let's see why. Yeah. Yeah. He intended to run, saw there's nowhere to go. You're not going to fool Dallas in the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory saying, why didn't you run? That's a 31-yard punt for Spike Jones. So the Cowboys put it in play first and 10 on the Eagle 43. Leading by 10, trying to get some more, and here's Larry Brinson to the 40-yard line. Back up running back there, three deep in that position with Newhouse, Laidlaw, and Brinson. And Brinson, a rookie out of Florida, carrying. He was another one of those free agents that the Dallas Cowboys have some way of finding, and they think he's got a great future. The NFL doubleheader next week, the New York Giants versus Philadelphia, Detroit versus Baltimore, then you'll have Green Bay, Chicago, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, and then Minnesota versus Oakland, and that's where you and I will be, Alex, and Atlanta versus Los Angeles. And I am looking forward to getting back out in that West Coast area. Seeing a left-handed quarterback. I've never done Oakland. I'm looking very much forward to it. Second and seven from the 40. So there's the two-minute warning here in Texas, and it is all Cowboys now as they lead the Eagles with two minutes left, 24 to 14. Well, in perhaps the wildest game of the day, San Francisco led Minnesota 27-0. Now Tommy Kramer has just passed 69 to Sammy White for a touchdown, and Minnesota goes out in front 28-27 with a minute and 38 left to go on that one. Preston Pearson carries inside the 35. We have another note on Tony Dorsett. Only two other rookies in NFL history have rushed for 200 or more yards in a game. Jim Brown in 1957 against the Rams rushed 237. And the Rams, Tom Wilson rushed 232 against Green Bay in 1956. And Tony Dorsett becomes the third rookie to rush for 200 or more yards in a game and double threes did it today. And Dorsett has rushed for 206. Mentioning Green Bay a moment ago, they have just edged out Detroit to the wire, 10 to 9. Third and one from the 34, and a fumble. I think Dallas and Starbuck recovered, even though the last man holding it will be an eagle. And that's another thing I didn't mention about having to change center. Sometimes the handoffs between the quarterback and his regular center will be thrown off a little bit, as you saw. Stallback has fumbled two in the last uh, two series. Did Good Fitzgerald point. go out before the last uh, fumble? I don't remember. I think Fitzgerald was hurt on the previous fumble. And now Tom Rafferty having trouble. Philadelphia timeout. Don't forget the mixed team championship in golf from Largo, Florida. Hollis Stacy and Jerry Pate were leading Curtis Strange and Nancy Lopez by three strokes. And it'll be decided after the ball game. So stay right with us. Larry Marshall and Wally Henry will go deep for the Eagles. The Cowboys in a fourth and three with a minute and six seconds left have the ball on the Eagle 36. 
And, of course, that was the message we gave you earlier. The Cowboys will be home for Christmas. They will entertain here December the 26th. There's a lot of football player right there. You're and looking at Benny Barnes, number 31. Benny Barnes does a great job. Hadn't had one single interception, but yet Drew Pearson says he's the best cornerback in football. Well, that's nice to hear from a teammate. Danny White kicking from midfield. Larry Marshall, Wally Henry standing deep. And time, too much time, charge against the Cowboys, so they'll tack five yards on. By the way, in talking about the fact the Cowboys are home for Christmas, on December 26th, the NFC playoffs east and west, right here on CBS. You betcha. There's a heck of an athlete, and I wish sometime somebody would get a chance to see him play quarterback, because he can play. Danny White. Danny White came in a trade for a draft choice to Houston. And that will go out. Now let's see where they mark it. They mark it going into the end zone, so they'll bring the touch back to the 20, and we'll put the ball in play with 59 seconds left to go in the game. The Cowboys leading handily 24 to 14. Left and Smith right. Crefley, the tight end, is on the right side. Jaworski, the left side to Sullivan, and he beat Heckman and goes out of bounds. For the first down, Mike Heckman defending, and Sullivan just ran it out to stop the clock. First down, and a fight on the field. Hold everything. Well, it would have to be my boy Cliff Harris it involved. It certainly is. Something. Is it? You got it right on. Down in there, mixing it up with the big boys, and that is certainly no place to be, is the umpire, Al Conway. He wants to see if anybody's been pinned. Oh. Are both shoulders down? So Cliff Harris involved in a little fracas here at the end. Our producer, Howard Reif Schneider, our thanks indeed, and to our director, Duke Struck. Both did a great job, both wonderful people. And not bad little dancer. Associate producer, Lee Webb, there's Buck Kelly, and so many others who worked so hard to get us on and send the ball game to you. 52 seconds left to go in the game. A few tempers flaring up. 24 to 14, Cowboy. Nothing like that spectacle we saw in the St. Louis game the other day, though. Oh, no. That was disgraceful. Did you ever get in a fight when you played Hawk? Yes, but only briefly. I took my shot and ran. Put it back to the 19-yard line. Let's get the call. Personal foul. Here, dead ball foul. A personal foul against the Eagles. The culprit was not signaled out, however. We're sure of one thing. It wasn't Conrad Dobler. Now, look at that. Dallas sitting on top 10 and 2, but the Cardinals in Washington are 7 and 5. Washington shut out Buffalo, and the Cardinals were trampled by the New York Giants. And Minnesota, of course, in the shocker of the day, down 24 to nothing, came back to pull it out 28-27. Dallas, of course, in this first and 25 situation, the nickel defense to try and stop Jaworski. They've already beaten him. It's just a question now of stopping. Gregory charging the pass to Sullivan. Bettison trying to block for him, and Sully gets across the 30 as he runs into Renfro just shy of the 35. The Philadelphia team you're looking at right now has nothing to be ashamed of. They have stayed in the ball game as best they could the entire day. They could find the themselves twice. Proud. Yes, sir. They and made a lot of good short. stands. It could have been a lot worse. I'll be home for Christmas. That's the theme song in Dallas. The Cowboys will be entertaining here the day after Christmas. Right now, the Eagles second and ten from their own 34. 39 seconds left, so this one is history. Larry Cole trying to get a Jaworski. He dumps it off to Bettison, who's at the 40-yard line. Trip drives forward, still going to shy of the 50. Mark Washington hit him on the 40, and he picked up another nine yards. Good job of Mark Washington getting the shot at him, but even a better job of Bertelson keeping his balance. Bettison, excuse me. Watch this. Not lost their poise at all. They know what they can do against the Dallas prevent defense, and they're staying right with it. I like the coaching job Dick Vermeil has done. 
Jack Betterson is a boy who was drafted by Denver last year. He scored one touchdown this year for the Eagles from the school at North Carolina. We have 28 seconds left to go in the game. First and 10 on the 49, and there are no timeouts left for the Eagles now. And there's a man that put it all together. Tom Landry. You can't say enough about the guy. He's got a great sense of humor. He's a very direct man, a very matter of fact, pragmatic man at that. He's honest about it. When they were 8 0, and people said, Are you going to lose? He said, Certainly we're going to lose a couple games. We're not that good yet. He said, We're about a year away from being a great football team, maybe even two. Well, the Eagles would settle for right now. They've got to believe this Dallas ball club is just loaded with talent. With 28 seconds left to go, Carmichael, Wright, and Smith left. Jaworski going for the distance, overthrows Carmichael off the hands of Cliff Harris and picked off by Mel Renfro to the 35, to the 40. And the aging veteran goes down at the 42. That's his second interception in the last two weeks, having a key interception in the Washington game. Has been such a tribute to this Cowboy organization and what a great player he's been. I'm 14 he years is. he's been in the league out of Oregon, Mel Renfro. He has been good for football. He has played every position that the Cowboys have asked him to play and played it so well. Played the corner, played the safety, made all pro at both positions. The years are just about through. They've passed him by. He'll last this one, and I imagine that's it. But what a career he's had. So Mel Renfro, after that deflection off the hands of Cliff Harris, and the Cowboys finish up with the ball. That's the way it began. They won the toss, and Starbuck will just sit down. The Eagles were down seven to nothing and tied. They were down 14 to seven and tied. Then Herrera kicked a 24 yard field goal and then the 84 yard run by Dorsett and that's it. The Dallas Cowboys have defeated the Eagles 24 to 14 and the Cowboys will be a host team in the playoffs on the 26th and their record now is 10 and 2 and for the Eagles they are 3 and 9 and on the road they are 1 and 6. Well, after this word from your local station, we'll be taking you to Largo, Florida for the final round of the Mixed Team Golf Championship. The NFL Today is a presentation of CBS Boys. Join ringmasters Lucille Ball and Telly Savalas when show...